can take a picture of me in it? No. For the Instagram? No. Not, all right, <laughs> you want? Actually, we could do it afterwards. Yeah. Okay. Like, not just to promote the podcast, not for the show. I mean, not for your Instagram. Unless you like. I mean, you're not posing up in the studio for a picture of your shirt. All right. So, <laughs> <laughs> this is another episode of the Educated and Reckless Podcast with your host, Apollo P. And no better, Nina. There we go. Last week, I messed it up because yep. I was in my zone. Fully said my whole name. I said the week. whole thing. All right. So, uh, we're back for another episode. Yep. And, uh,. We got a lot to talk about. We do. And uh, we're going to start off with this, all right? So, Nina, what's going on? Wait, before you ask what's going on, I think we should let the people know that there's a possibility of things changing. Oh, okay. We got to be oh, oh, full disclosure? Yeah. Right. It's not It's not confirmed, but it's possible that we might have to change the drop date because um, Apollo has got, got to make business moves out here. Yeah. So, um. We will keep you guys posted when we find out more information. Hopefully, we don't have to, but if we have to, you guys now know. We don't know what date or anything because nothing's confirmed, but yeah. Okay, my week. Why <laughs> you look so sad? Because the way you said that, it was like, yeah, it's kind of hard, yeah. No. All right, go. Um, How's your week been, Nina? My week was good. I um, uh, I think I finally found my my like weights in the gym. Like It's my third week there now. I think I finally figured out what works what, for you? Yeah, yeah, what I can do. Okay. Um, which is really exciting. Um, I went to Anko on Sunday. Tell us about that experience, Nina. How's that? I've never been to Anko. It was popping over the summer, it looked like. Yes, it was. It I went a couple times in the summer. So, well, I met your friend there from high school. And um, what's it called? Yeah, it was really good. But if I'm going to be so completely honest with you right now, I was so drunk. I don't, I could not even tell you one song that played in the club that night. I haven't been that drunk in a very long time. No, I think you were drunk like a few ever. No, but ago. not like that. Like this was like almost the entire night was a blackout. Like I remember, I don't remember getting into the club, showing my ID, paying or anything like that. Mm -hmm. I took like 500 pictures in the bathroom there. Don't remember any of those. Mm. Uh, I remember standing on the couch at one point and somebody adding me on Snapchat and then uh, I squashed my beef with somebody else who was there as well. And I remember like maybe 30 seconds of that. I don't even know what was Mahat, said. Nothing. Me but, gone. <laughs> but we friends now. So. <laughs> um, and then I somehow I ended up outside the club by myself. I don't know how. Like I like the club was over and everyone was leaving. Mm -hmm. And I was not with my friends anymore. I wasn't with anybody. <laughs> I just went outside. And then my friend Brittany calls me. She's like, yo. These guys want to get Chinese food. Let's go. And we go to get Chinese food and somebody paid for everybody. So free Chinese food. See, and, uh, I think that's a hold on. Hold on. Before you go any further, I, I you had mentioned this before, but I remember uh, what was it? I swear I was talking to someone from United States. Right. Uh -huh. And they said when guys do that, it's more so of a power as a status move. It's I not, could see that. It's not even like me trying to get into your pants. It's more for a status move. It's yeah. Like when I pay for everyone. It, exactly. Because you live there. I kid you not. There was at least... 15 20 of us there because yeah. we had two tables and there yeah. was a lot of people there and he paid for everybody and i was like holy fuck yeah, like, that's a status move um and i think if it's the same person i think it is which we're not 100 percent sure who it was because even your friend doesn't know who it was yeah. <laughs> um, that's a status move yeah <laughs> and we were sitting at the same yeah. table yeah, i don't know who, but you, you, what, it was probably the person who went to the washroom and got I back think, and paid no i think it was the, the i think it was the same person who drove us home and the same person who paid for all the bottles in the club mm. but nobody knew who this mystery person was see that's how you you don't want, i mean that's a status move yo that's a power move it's like when you buy when you're able to buy all the bottles uh, buy all the meals and drive people back home no but it was wild i I, and I um I like I didn't expect my night to be to run that late. I didn't get home till six o'clock in the morning. Shout out to you. I was fucking dead. I mean, but I got food, so I was happy. But yeah, that was it. And then that's pretty much it. That was the highlight of my week. That's the highlight. Was going out. Was yeah. going out. Yeah, I didn't do it. Oh no, I went to see Jake Cole on Thursday. How could I forget? <laughs> because he's boring. Young Thug got let into Canada, <laughs> so that was a surprise. Jake Cole's boring. No, it was actually good. They, you can see like when he's performing, and I, this was the first time I've ever gone to a concert sober. Yeah, the first. Well, time why do you go to concerts like drunk? Because it's just fun. Is it? Yeah, but no, this was the first time I went sober, so I was actually like. There, there. Well, he doesn't. The Jacob really doesn't make drunk music. 
No, but like I went to his last concert drunk, not like wasted, but just like on a nice wave. But you, so what I'm trying to get at is you could see him like when he's performing, he's genuinely happy. Like he'll just look at the crowd and just start smiling and shit. And like, it's really cute. But yeah, I went to see Jay Cole. Jaden Smith opened up for him. And he was like, he came into the crowd at one point. Hey, um, that's yeah. how you perform. That was cool. Young Thug. Yeah, I was very shocked to see him. And then, yeah, that was that was it. So I had two highlights. Your turn. You went you went clubbing at Anko and it was lit. And you went to the J. J. Cole, Cole concert and it, it was, was lit. lit. All right. I mean, it sounds like you, you live in. week, yeah. It sounds like you living out here, Nina. Yeah. All right. I'm also broke, though. Go ahead. Go ahead, girl. <laughs> Go ahead. Live your best life. I am. Living my best <laughs> life. You live the lit life. You know, low income traveling. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> can't even laugh because it's true oh man <laughs> uh, uh, for me i've been chilling to be honest with you i keep on saying this every week yeah you do my you life is do something exciting my life bro tra- if you had just listened if your friend told me to bring you to this party and yeah. you were like no i don't want to go i don't go out well it could have been so much fun if you came with me nah it could have been so much fun nah i don't go i literally out- would have made you have the time of your life i don't go out like that it could have been fun. You could you could have still stayed sober, and I still would have made it fun. You probably would have got annoyed of me halfway through the night. I don't drink. I don't drink. So <laughs> exactly. So you could have stayed sober and still had fun. Yo, it could have. That was a perfect opportunity, Apollo. For what? For us to go, and we could have promoted the podcast. And what? Talk to every <laughs> whole bunch of other drunk people. Oh, who are you? You look like so familiar. You. Know, what do you do? <laughs> I'm, and then I'm here talking to you like I'm, I'm, I have a regular voice. Nah, My name's Apollo. Nobody knows that when you're drunk or not drunk. No one. Yeah, people do know. No, I bet you people assume at the J. Cole concert I was high, but it wasn't. Are you just are you just assuming <laughs> that people assume that you're high? Yeah, because everyone else there was high. <laughs> oh, come on. <laughs> no, but yeah. You Yo, it, talking to drunk girls is the worst, man. Why? I remember I went to Soaker or Die. Ugh. All those gr- drunk girls pulled up on me. I'm like, yo, what the fuck? I can't talk to you. You look Why? sloppy. You look sloppy. You look sloppy, bro. Like you look so sloppy. And I can't. I can't have a conversation with you because you always like, oh, where do you, what is that? Is that a chain? Can I see your chain? Yo, can, I, can I get that? Can I, can yeah, I but that's because that? some girls don't know how to handle their liquor. When I tell you, you will never know if I'm blacked out or if I'm not blacked out. Like that yeah. Sunday night, people who talked to me probably thought I was perfectly fine. I was blacked the fuck out. You, you know, you're in a setting where everyone else is drunk, right? You, so. Yeah. It's, it's the norm to be drunk. Yeah, but not like that. No. I like to remember parts of the night at least. Like, I remember I was in the Nina, club you, for a I think you have a hours. problem. I don't think so. You have a problem, Nina. <laughs> I, don't I think, think you have a problem. So. I think Listen, so. I don't be drinking on my own. I'm good. You don't be drinking on your own? No. Doesn't mean you just... Just because you got someone a companion when you drink doesn't mean you you don't got a problem. No. Most people, cra- most I crackheads do crack with other people. I don't. I'm a problem. Yeah, <laughs> you say that now. But I, I haven't done anything this week. I haven't done anything special I can I can remember. Did you hmm. release your first episode of Above the Border? Oh, yeah. I edited it. And while I was editing, I got frustrated. And I was like, man, look at this trash, man. This is so garbage. That's because you're too hard on yourself sometimes. So I edited like the whole, four, it's like 40 minutes long. Okay. And I'm like, edited and I'm like, yo, this is just garbage. And I ended up rendering it all and exporting it and then uploading it to YouTube. Uh-huh. But it's like un- unlisted. And I gave it to, I sent it to the people to check it out. Still haven't got a review from him, so I'm like, all right, probably trash. So okay. I'm just gonna, I don't know if I'm gonna. That I'm, was really negative. I'm gonna move forward. I'm gonna move forward. <laughs> <laughs> I'm gonna move forward. It's just that the one, this one that I did, that last one that I did, it wasn't living up to the expectation that I kind of like did with the three other clips of me having my intros and yeah, uh, speaking on stuff. So I didn't have that <laughs> same energy energy in the, in the intro, the conversation I had with my co-host. That was kind of ass, and then. The top five countdown that I had didn't go as well as planned. Well, it is your first, like, yeah, yeah. episode. So it's going to be shit. Not shit shit, but, like... But the thing is, my intro shouldn't be shit, and my outro shouldn't be that shit. Because I those are the two ones that I've, I'm have i mainly holding down, and I've been doing those for a while. But it's the the, the debate that well, I can understand. Just, maybe it was just an off day. Maybe just one, or maybe you just got nervous because you knew, okay, this is the one that's getting published. So, and then you just happen to, or you're just extra hard on yourself because you know it's the one getting published. Maybe I know you're hard on yourself. I be hard on myself because you're hard on this damn podcast. Yeah, hard. <laughs> hard on everything, right? I can't be. 
I don't be, I don't like touching things that I don't, I don't I don't really see a lot of you know potential in. No, nah, I get it. No, nah, it's not that there's no potential in it. It's just that you feel like you feel like there's no potential in it. But if you show it to somebody else who doesn't really like a regular person who's going to be watching it who doesn't know um, how like video editing and filming and shit like and scripting and stuff like that works or mm. voicing or anything like that, they're gonna say it's like great. Yeah. Because so, think about it. Not everyone who's watching your shit is going to be in tune with all that, like those aspects. So I'm, like how I'm we really, are. I'm really banking on the people who are really unknowledgeable to <laughs> like my shit. Okay, <laughs> think about the people, all the people who watch like, um, I don't know, like 106 and Park. I wasn't educated in that stuff when I was watching 106 and Park. I just think it was great. Uh, I mean, 106 and Park was great. It like, was great. It was great. so it was great. that's what I mean, though. It's going to be mostly regular people. Versus people who know. Like, look, people be telling us our podcast is great. <laughs> yeah, I haven't heard anyone that say our, our podcast is shit. And I'm, I, and, I, and it got to a now point. Now we're nervous. Yeah, I'm waiting for the person to tell me my podcast is shit. Because I'm like, all right, cool. Finally. <laughs> finally. That's what I'm thinking. Because I remember Chester Rapper said this in an interview with Joe Budden. He uh-huh. was like, we live, in a, we live in a generation where kids are just trying to at least hear something that's the, tr- are trying to at least be seen or and heard. Mm-hmm. So it was like. When someone says there's some, when someone says their their music is trash or something, is like it works out to be something good because at least someone took the time to listen to your shit and say it was garbage. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, so I was looking at. I like, mean, I have a few people who fully listen to our our like whole episodes, not yeah. just clips, and they've told me that um, there's parts where we could improve. Yeah. Um, but, but I'm talking about it. saying improve is constructive. I'm talking about someone just saying flat out, yo, this whole podcast is ass, my guy. Listen, if you guys think our whole podcast is ass, can you tell us? I want someone to say, yo, this this shit trash. We won't get mad. I just want to know. When someone says it's trash, I'm like, all right, cool. At least I'm getting to, I'm I'm re- reaching bigger audiences. Yeah. Because ones who don't like. Us. Yeah, yeah. That's why I like. <laughs> We're getting them, and then they're leaving us right away. No, but the thing is, when you reach a bigger audience, it's like now you now you're hitting on the taste of different people. It's like not everyone can like your stuff. And if everyone's liking yourself, that means we're, we're not. We're not. Then a that big means. Artist. Then I feel like we have too many yes people around us. Yeah, but I don't, like the thing is, I'm way too hard on myself, so I don't really need a yes person. I'd rather have a no person, and then have that really hard no person tell me it's trash. And Damn, then, then you're gonna be even more hard on us. Nah, not nah, You know what? Maybe let me just stop. Yeah, just exactly. Stop. But I'm hard. I'm a hard critic on myself. Yeah, I know. I have to be. I thought I, I was a hard critic on myself. Nah, man. You get around me and it's like, nah, this shit trash. It's ass. Oh, damn. I'm like, wow, I love myself. Yeah. <laughs> I, no, I love myself. It's just that when I put out stuff, I want I want stuff I could really love like years and months yeah. down, the, down the line. Yeah. So that's a little my going into my mind about how I feel about myself and content and the week that I had, you know. Oh, Thanksgiving. Let me just not forget oh, that. Oh, yeah. Yo, you know why I forgot about my Thanksgiving? Because it was shit. It was shit? I went to my aunt's house, my aunt who can't cook. <laughs> Look at you. You're hard on your family. I'm actually like, I sound like such an ungrateful brat right now. But oh, yo, Thanksgiving, you're looking forward to turkey and everything. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I pull up and what the fuck do we get? Chicken. Chicken what? Like a whole who, chicken? No. Chicken like cutlets. Who oh. the fuck chicken. is eating chicken breast on Thanksgiving? Not I, mm. but I had to. Shout out to your wait, that was your auntie. She yeah, cheese and potato pie, which was great. I love that cheese and um, potato pie. Uh, and then like corn and stuffing that tasted like shit. It was way too much bread in it. Mm. Like it was the stuffing made from the box. First of all, oh where it was trash because I seen the box on top of her fridge. And Hold on, where like, she isn't the stuffing supposed to go inside the turkey? Oh yeah, but where was the turkey, Apollo? Oh, oh god, there was none. <laughs> oh, <shit>. Okay. <laughs> I was actually <laughs> cheesed. <laughs> and then what the fuck? dessert. I didn't even eat dessert because there was nothing good. I was so mad. Like I was looking forward to I really my I really like for the holidays, I really like eating pineapple ham. That's my favorite. But none you of like that. pineapple? Yeah, like ham with the pineapple rings. Yo, it's so good. Pineapple tastes like ass. No, it doesn't. Did ever tell you the story why I don't like pineapple and pineapple pizza? No, why? Wow. Pineapple I, pizza's good. So this is Don't um, at me. So this is what happened. When I was a young kid, right? I had a friend named Billy. Okay. Billy was this white kid this who- It's a real name. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, I mean, it's way- what, what, I'm, This one was like not even double digits yet. Okay. So- <laughs> So his name was Billy, right? He used to live. I lived in the in the the apartment complex right in front of his his neighborhood type of thing. Okay. Or it was like a little court. So me and Billy, we friends. I go over to his house one time. His parents, 
end up leaving to go somewhere, but they had bought pizza. They had bought pizza for him. I'm scared. <laughs> for his, him and his sister. And I'm o i am just happened to be over there. So I'm eating pineapple pizza with him and he's having we're all having a good time. We're all laughing, right? And so one thing about Billy, Billy has a uh, physically and mentally disabled sister, right? So she's restricted to a wheelchair, electronic wheelchair at that. And she can't really talk and things like that. She looked like she had like a back case of scoliosis type of thing. Like, okay. like she would sit on the wheelchair a particular type Not, of way. Yeah, okay. And her hands would be like, you know, all that type of way, right? And she couldn't really speak properly, proper words and things like that. It would be like a struggle to really understand her, right? Okay. So, and so she's older. She's an older girl. How many? How many? Like I'm going to say, I'm going to say 16. Okay. I'm going to say 16. And but you were what at the time? Like eight? I was like eight. Okay. I was like eight. Hold on. Uh, I was like eight. It was before. It was before like grade. I know for a fact before grade. It was between four and less. Like grade four and less. Okay. So I'm over at his house, right? She's on her period, right? I did not know. Why that. do you know? That? I, didn't, I, I didn't know this, right? I didn't know this. I'm eating the pineapple pizza, oh right? Oh God, I'm scared. And Billy's like, "Yo, turn around, look, look." And he has his sister's leg spread, type of open, and it's bleeding. I'm like, "Whoa!" And I'm eating. The, and this is back in the day when, like, this is back in the day when, like, when you look at something disgusting, you lose your appetite. And this is when, yeah. So I'm looking at this, and I'm like, "Whoa, my whole appetite's gone." I'm feeling, like I'm finna throw up. I finna throw up. And I'm like, I, I, I don't. I was, yo, it's traumatic. I was like, I couldn't finish the pizza. I tried to stuff it down. I couldn't finish. It, it was hard. Did to you eat. even know like why she was bleeding, or it just didn't make? Did you know like that's what a period? Yo. Was? I see when later on in life, uh, but like he, like there's blood coming out the girl's vagina, like, and I'm young and I'm eating pizza, pineapple pizza like that. That's why I don't eat pineapple pizza because every time I don't even eat pineapples. I think it's like a PTSD, like at the back of my, every time I have like a, I put a pineapple in my mouth or something, pause, like it just doesn't taste good to me. And every time I see pineapple pizza, I just get to reminisce the reminiscence of bloody pussy. Like it just, it just, I can't do it. That's actually low key nasty, but like my food thing, like I never, even if I see something gross while I'm eating, like chances are I'm gonna continue eating. I'm a fat ass see, at heart. I'm t- this is back in the day when you when you saw something disgusting, you would lose your appetite. I feel like I wouldn't. I I'm so serious, you guys. If I didn't work out, I would probably be a really fat person, like really fat. I could see it. My Portion sizes of food are disgusting. Well, you know, you're trying to get those six packs, so your portions. <laughs> I know, that's why I had to go and on you, the meal And you retired those hot dogs in pizza pockets. Yeah, I miss <laughs> them. And the craft dinner and Mr. Oh Noodles. God. Yo, you treat yourself like a terrible college student. Uh, but they taste so good. All right. No, but yeah, pineapples are great. <laughs> I wasn't going to. Pineapples taste like trash, yeah, bro. Yeah, they're great. It tastes like trash. And it reminds me of fucking period. Okay. Yo, that's what. See, the thing is. You know what? It might have been re- my, that might have been the reason I never. I, it took me a long time to go down on girls and girls talking about. I eating. was gonna say yeah, because pineapple is supposed to make you taste good, bro. And when girls talk about, I'm eating all these pineapples and shit like that, and and I'm the type of person we ha- like. I would have sex on the period. It's so like you, it just doesn't work out. Wait, well. you have sex on the period or you don't? Do I have sex on the period? Did you just say you have sex when the girls on the period? Yeah, period don't stop me. Oh my god, that's period don't disgusting. stop me, bro. I, it's PTSD to be honest with you. It's a traumatic moment. So you have sex with the girl while she's on her period, like on like the last days or something like that. Oh my god, and I can't. Judge me if you can. I'm not the only one out in this world that does. I know that. you're not the only yeah. one. Out in this world. <laughs> I'm not the only one out in this oh world. Oh my god, not that's letting traumatic. nothing stop me from that. I'd rather die. Word. Yes. Word. I'd literally rather die. Okay. <clears throat> okay. All right. So, uh, thank you for sharing that. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, all right, so, uh, all right, we got we got twenty minutes of talking about our week. I didn't really tell people what I did, but you did. So let's get into it. So there's a lot of things we got to talk about. Mm-hmm. Uh, we got white women, we got black guys, we got UKs, and we got series and all that hip hop shit. I don't know where to start. What do you think is more of a, you know, since we're when I start with this, share soon to R. Kelly then. Sure. All right. Well, yeah. You want to talk about that? Or you want to talk about some ghetto? Uh, hip hop shit. YBM Namir. You think that's not? I don't really think there's much to talk about. With All right. That. So I let me just say why Y B N Namir was pulled up in London, and they tried to test his neck, and then he showed him what Guaguan. He stomped him out. Yeah. And that's about it. That's all you need to know. <laughs> Ta-da. <laughs> Next topic. All right. So 
there's a sheriff that is trying to that is suing R. Kelly, uh, for basically ruining his marriage. Yep. So the woman that uh that R. Kelly was sleeping with, he had he he has slept with her in the past, and then I guess they re- <laughs> rekindled their their relationship at one of his concerts, yep. and she was married with the sheriff, and uh you know. Things it was got a Mississippi sheriff. Mississippi sheriff. I didn't know where it was exactly. Oh well, I do know, it, but I just forgot. So yeah, so they had the little thing back and forth while she was still married. This is why some women are so scandalous. Mm-hmm. She was she was in a full blown marriage, like I do till death do our part, until sickness into and health. And you out here getting dick from an R and B singer, a legend at that. <laughs> <laughs> you scandalous! <laughs> you scandalous. <laughs> from the sheriff to an R and B legend. All right, so I mean, yeah, hey, she good on both fronts. Pause. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so so yeah, so R Kelly was piping her out while she was still married to this dude for five years five years that's an affair right that's a full-on boyfriend like why did she even get married because they got married in 2012 Mm -hmm. and then she met her in what 2013 so 17 that means 20 they got married in 2012 so that means she was literally cheating on him the entire marriage yeah that's fucked he also says that r kelly gave him her his wife chlamydia and that gave him chlamydia yeah and um, his wife also said that they should move to Georgia at some point. Oh, because he lives in Georgia? <laughs> yeah. So she could be closer to Kelly. Yo, she's scandalous. And the sheriff went into financial ruin because he couldn't find a job in Georgia. Yeah. So he's suing Kelly for ruining his marriage, depriving him of his spouse, okay. love, support, and conjugal affection. He says he suffered emotional, financial, and psychological loss. Yeah. Kelly said that he knows this girl, but he denies yeah. sleeping with her, obviously, and breaking up the guy's marriage. And he's asking the judge to throw the case. So how you know how you know her then? <laughs> right? What shade name did you guys hang yeah, out at? Right? And where did you just talk and, <laughs> Richard. and not yeah. I yeah, where'd you guys talk? Where you guys hang out from? Where, right. Where you know her from? So that happened, but like, okay, in your in this case, because yeah. obviously at some point, like if you're being cheated on yeah. or something is going on, like most people kind of have a hint. Do they not? Like, am I wrong? I don't know. I've never been cheated on, so I wouldn't. I don't. Well, so, well, uh, bad as far as I know. Yeah, as far as you know, you've never been cheated on. <laughs> and the thing is, I think what a lot of the common traits of someone cheating on someone is that you you don't sleep with them a lot. Uh, you seem emotionally uh, distant. Yeah. Uh, you seem very private about a lot of things that you do now. Um, and then you start to make a like you start to go on girls trips and stuff like that. And that's what I mean. So I feel like at Spending some night, point. This guy had to have caught a hint somewhere. Mm, I don't know. But, okay, so in this case, like, who do you think is to blame, though? Like, out of the three of them, like, whose fault oh, is this man. really? Because Kelly obviously knew she was married. Yeah. She obviously fucked up because she knew she was married, too, yeah. and it's her entire marriage. Yeah. But he also, the husband didn't really, like, where, did he never catch on? He up and moved to fucking Georgia for what? For love? Like, I want to know what her reason was to move to Georgia. Like, what did she say to him? Like, hey, let's go to Georgia. I got a new job. Uh, like, Aren't did she they, have a job when they moved there? Like, be honest, like you know, like I said, like, this woman is scandalous. Scandalous. Yeah. Dirt on my heel. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> but I, th- I honestly blame, I blame the woman, obviously. Yes. And I also blame R. Kelly. I blame both of those guys. Yeah. You know why? Because first, the woman knows that she's dealing with two men, right? She got if she knows she's dealing with R. Kelly, she knows R. Kelly's getting around. Because first off, if you're as a guy, if I'm cheating with you and you have a man, the fuck I'm gonna be loyal to you for? Yeah. Not it's not like I'm only gonna come and get your pussy. Yeah. It's not like I'm only I'm only gonna tell you certain things and and I could be damned if you never come move closer to me ever. It's like fuck you. You got your own shit going on. You're scandalous, anyways. And when I'm done with you. I'm done with you. Yeah, exactly. So, our, and the thing is, you know, and with that being said, that woman kind of, I felt like she knew something, something about it because, you know, she couldn't be the only one in R. Kelly's life. Clearly, mm-hmm. if she's cheating on her, man, clearly R. Kelly's not the only one in her. And, 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 and R. Kelly is not the only, no, the woman is not, what am I trying to say? <laughs> that R. Kelly is not only fucking her. All right, let me say that. Yeah. So he's getting piped from all these other girls in different in different um counties and states and, and cities. So he brought back a chlamydia to you. You you gotta go like, why are you fucking with this guy raw? That's what exactly what I was gonna say next. Why are you fucking yeah. with this guy raw? She literally yeah, like that's 
fucking crazy. Like you're married what? and you're trying not to get caught. <laughs> and the surefire way to get caught is getting chlamydia inside what? Oh, a marriage. Oh my god. Bitch, how do you get chlamydia? We only fucking each other. Like And then something comes out, it's like, oh shit. All right, so I've been cheating with this dude. And then you could lie about and say it was one time. It's like, fuck that. One but, one time, one too many. Yeah, no. I think I agree. It's definitely her fault a hundred percent. Yeah. Um obviously Kelly's at fault too. I like I don't think the husband is at fault. No. And, like he's definitely innocent, but I just find it hard to believe that at no point in time during this five year long affair did he not catch a hint onto something like I mean, you know when someone's energy like i'm really good at feeling when people's energy are, is off yeah. like when shit is off i know yeah so like i don't i think keep talking keep talking people yeah, uh, the, re- the reason why nina seems like that is because i'm trying to get my charger <laughs> yeah so keep talking and and um yeah keep going but yeah i think she's whack as fuck for letting him fuck raw because especially because she was trying not to get caught yeah like well, she's doing a good job at it not getting caught well for five years yeah i just up up and left mississippi to go to georgia i just really want to know what the re like what she told her husband in order to get him to be like yeah let's go to georgia yeah um but yeah i'm sorry i ran out of stuff to talk if you look at you nina (laughs) can't do it on your own can you can't can't do it on your own nina (laughs) (laughs) i I don't have a podcast on my own it would suck all right so I think we should like jump into another topic. You feel like that? Yeah, cause okay, cause remember last week we didn't keep time on oh, how long we went. Yeah. Oh yeah, and we ended up having like a two hour podcast. And plus, this is a topic that's not really like heavy. It's also similar to another topic I re- had posted on my Instagram story about the woman saying that she ended up sleeping with five guys because her boyfriend was on social media too much or flirt. I did not see that. Yeah, and she ended up cheating with five guys one after another within a few span of a few weeks. Oh she was crazy God. because her boyfriend was on social media yeah, too much yeah and liking what other girls pictures i don't know it was like he was on social media and flirting with other girls okay so let's okay let me ask you a question yeah keep going how do you i'm gonna keep going <laughs> yeah. i plugged up my headphones by accident Paula is a whole ass mess right now go go, go. keep talking i'm, I'm gonna so um <clears throat> obviously people sorry something's wrong with my throat today you guys Oh, Nina, oh, no. Oh, my God, I didn't mean it like that. I oh, just... No. <laughs> <laughs> I was sick last week, so, like, it's kind of just, like... Okay, anyways. Um, like, what do you think... If you're in a relationship with somebody... Like, you know how social media plays a really big role nowadays? It's, like, yeah. how would how do you feel personally if you're in a relationship with a girl and, like, about her liking pictures of... Like, not just guy friends, but, like, maybe guys that, uh, like, picked, like, scandalous pictures of dudes. Like, you know how when a guy likes a picture, like a, like a, like like a, a bikini pic of another girl, like a, the girl like flips a meat out or print? something? No, not a, no, I'm not talking that scandalous. I mean, that is an option. Yeah, a meat print or a fucking, like, a shirtless, like, at the gym, light skin face look, guy, looking at. Light skin? Like, so like, you know, light, no, 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 no. But you know the light skin face that they always do, licking <laughs> oh their lips and raising their eyebrows and shit? Yeah. Like, I'm talking shit like that. Okay. Like, trying to be seductive and whatnot. Mm-hmm. Like, how do you feel about your girlfriend liking those kind of pictures or commenting like hard eye emojis under all those and stuff like that? Like, what do you, what do you think? The thing is, uh, I don't have, I'm, I'm secure enough to feel like it's just a fantasy type mm-hmm. shit. But what if it's somebody like, um, like someone that you, that she knows that she could possibly run into that's from this area that she's maybe seen at the club a couple times or something like, and they've talked at the club. And gotten drinks, and then it's like she's liking all his pictures like that, and she's commenting hard eyes under his pic. How are you feeling? Then I'm going like, you're doing too much, girl. Yeah. You're doing way too much. Okay. And like I said, the minute I don't trust you, I got to leave you. Yeah. No, that's, I, how, that's how off the rip. I agree. I'm very. So my thing is, like, for me, if I'm in a relationship, like, I don't want you commenting hard eyes under anyone's fucking pictures unless it's mine. Because that's that to me, to, to me, the comment is like an invite. Like, if you're commenting hard eyes, it's like an invite. You're like, yeah, bitch, slide into my DMs. Like, that's what that yeah. seems like to me. You know what I mean? Well, because do, do people really do that? Like, I'm yes. off the rip. Like, I've seen girls comment hard eyes on my shit. And I've never just, like, just invited myself to DMs. Mm, it's happened. Um, All right, maybe the, maybe I'm not doing. Maybe I got this whole social media thing fucked up. Then. No, because what's it called? I'm thinking like, like first of all, yeah, I'm just I'm taking that as an open invite as like, yeah, you're single, like you know. So it's just like, 
that's disrespectful to me but the whole liking like if you're liking pics of like and girls be doing the absolute most on but Instagram is that now, is that still enough room for you to go like you know what fuck it you keep no. this shit online i'm gonna get real no no, no no i will address you face to face and tell you like yo this is bothering me stop yeah um but i also feel like uh um i lost my train of thought oh yeah yes. if you're liking a girl's picture mm-hmm. If it's, like, an Instagram model, whatever, then I don't give a shit. Like, who lives in, like, California? If it's somebody who lives locally and she follows you back and you're liking her, like, thong booty pics and shit. Like, I'm going to like that shit. I'm going to be honest with you, my baby girl. I'm going to be... I'm going to like I, that I'm shit. I'm not going to get mad at you, but I'm going to be like, yo, what the fuck? Like, uh, I'm going to be honest Because if it's, like, to me, that, like, that could also be a possibility of, like, you running into the club or having interactions with that person before not but, doesn't but, have to be but, romantic but the thing is you got to know your guy right you got to really know your significant other yeah if you know your significant other is type of like me i'm a friendly person but i'm not no friendly person type yeah. of shit so it's that's like, exactly no they, yeah i completely get what you're saying like i'm not going i'm just i'm not one of them guys it's like hey how you doing yeah, nah i'm fr- i'm cool yeah i'm respectful to everybody i'm not no friendly ass dude though no so I, if, yeah if I my girl that. knows that it's like yo he's a he's a good guy if anyone had the opportunity to talk to but he's not really pulling up to the place trying to talk to everybody he's not one of them guys no so. that's definitely true 100 percent. i so get that my you, girl doesn't you're know, right you're like you're not you're friendly but you're not like that yeah i'm not like that so if my girl doesn't know that then i'm clearly fucking with the wrong one yeah no um yeah it's kind of but it would never drive me to the point where i'm like yeah i'm gonna fucking cheat on you like to me it's just a matter of i guess boundaries i don't know All like right. i just yeah. oh, man. so uh i'm glad that you shared that once yeah. again, no, I, I appreciate you. I was trying to keep talking while you were fixing all your shit. Yeah, my shit fixed. It's fixed. All right. So Iggy Azalea, her tour got canceled. Is she? Oh, <laughs> is it, <laughs> yo, is it over for her? I thought she was going to make a comeback. What, what, what was it called? Candy? Or Cream? It's sure. cream. It was cream. I think I thought I heard that one song. Didn't she yeah. have it? Was it a song with Tyga? Yeah, it was a talk, song with Tyga. I thought she was going to make a comeback. I'm like, oh shit, this song sounds good. It, I don't think she ever had a full fledged. I think she was more so just a one hit wonder with Fancy. Oh, where? Like, she had, what, a couple... Didn't she have some before Fancy, though? Mm, I don't think so. That was her really... That was really the, her big song. The big song. I kind of had a feeling she was going to be a one-hit wonder. Um, And that was really her big song. People are still, like, talking about her because they think she's so trash and stuff, but... Trash how? Like, people think, like, she's a trash... Well, why are you looking all confused like that? Because I, I want to know. Where's the trash? <clears throat> like, trash rapper. Oh, trash rapper. Yeah, not... Oh. No, she's hot. I yeah. think she's hot. Yeah, okay. But, like, she's a trash rapper. Yeah, I mean... That's what I'm saying. So, people are still bringing attention to her at the end of the day. Like, oh, the memes she... of her never go away, so... Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but I do think she was more so a one-hit wonder. Oh, so it's over for her. We're not, we're not going to get another... Uh... I mean, we might in a couple years. Or that was maybe a good song year. that she had. Cream was pretty good. And she dropped an EP called, what, Protect the Summer, Save the Summer, Survive the Summer? One of them joints. What did it do? Oh, I didn't look into the stats for that. Yeah. I wasn't checking for it like that. I See, that's what I mean. I feel like people aren't, like, she doesn't have any diehard fans. You know what she got to do? She got to do porn, man. Actually, no, no, porn is too much. She got to drop that sex tape. I swear she had a sex tape was almost getting leaked by some I dude. I think she almost did, too. Yeah, like, we're, that, should've, that shit should have been leaked. I want to see Iggy sucking dick. <laughs> <laughs> I seen I've seen Black Tiger. I seen Black China sucking dick. Black China did not suck dick. She licked the tip and called it a dick. All right, man. All right. <laughs> I mean, like that got that got that got China popping for like a little bit. It didn't. It got her popping for all of five minutes, and everyone you was know laughing because all she literally did was lick the tip. You not know, even the, she just like did a little like a little tongue flick and called it a date. Yeah. Like, bitch, what the. Fuck. Yeah, you know what the thing is? You know what? Sucking dick bad is not going to get you anywhere, but sucking dick good could get you pretty far. And and the thing is, girls might not know that they might not know how to suck dick for the most part. Like, a lot of guys don't know how to get their dick sucked, and a lot of girls don't know how to suck dick. So if a girl who doesn't know how to get sucked dick, and she's sucking on a guy who doesn't know what good, what the a good fellation... Dick fellati- sucking feels like. Yeah, he's going to go like, yo, the shit fire. And then when she records it, it looks crazy wild. And then, yeah, and then it looks it's like, like shit. It's like, what the fuck is you doing? I wonder if anyone has ever come from Black China sucking their dick. Obviously. The way that looked, I, you know what? It looked, like, so? it looked like she was washed. It looked like she, was, she gave up. the way that really looked, looked, no, it didn't even look like she, didn't even look like she tried. Like, it just... Homeboy, it, it looked like homeboy was satisfied <laughs> with anything she gave. Yeah, <laughs> literally, like it was terrible. Oh man, I was appalled. I'm pretty sure girls are looking at this like I could do it better. I've seen a lot better dick sucking on my Twitter timeline I'll by some random chicks, random thoughts. I think everybody looked at that video and said I could do it better. Hold on, does India Love have a sex tape? 
I know? think I heard something about. That's where Indian Love had like some, or either that, or either it was like some type of weird thing where we seen her like her pussy, or she was sucking dick. Um, and then what's it called? There's also um, there was somebody else by by the name of. I don't remember. Okay. All right. So moving forward, what about this Tyson Beckford? You th- you think this still old? Tyson Beckford. He this is Kanye West and edits an eggplant. <laughs> Kim Kardashian. Oh, this is a great segue. <laughs> Someone's calling me. Oh, are you serious? Wait, is it like you know them? No. All right, pick it up, yo. I think it might be the hospital for my MRI. Oh shit, Let's MRI. What's out. MRI? Oh, we'll find it. Hello. 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 This is Told you. <laughs> Hang on, I gotta confirm this appointment. What's an MRI? I'll explain to you. All right then. Podcast is on hold, people. <laughs> okay, appointment is confirmed. Um, an MRI is magnetic renaissance imaging. Mm-hmm. It's like a ginormous magnet. Yeah. Um, and it just takes scans of like whatever part. Like, so when I tore my both my ACLs, I had to get one. Um. And like now, I'm getting one on my leg again. Damn! Well, how you fuck that shit up again? Uh, no, I didn't. I didn't turn my ACL again. Thank <laughs> God. No, I found like a a weird like I have a, like this lump on my shin. I've had it mm. for like two years, but it really started to hurt me this year. So I did uh an X-ray, I did a CT scan, and yeah. I did an ultrasound, and nothing. Like it just didn't really look that crazy. And then the doctor's like, "Hey." You're going to do an MRI. And I was like, because I, I held off the MRI because I have two screws in my knees from yeah. the um, oh. ACL repairs. Can that shit pull it up? That's what I'm saying. Oh. I'm fucking, I'm not kidding you guys. I think I'm actually going to start crying when I get into that machine because oh, yeah. I'm scared. Like yeah. the doctor said, he said, call your surgeons and ask them. And they said it's fine. But like, that's still scary because it's a giant magnet. It's not like it's a small magnet. It's oh, huge. Why the hell does it take a magnet to photocopy your body? I don't fucking know. But... Like, yo, if my shit gets pulled out and, yeah. like, my insides from my knee are outside, yeah. oh, my God. We got, I, we're Canadian. We got free health. No, you I don't it. think I'll ever be the same mentally. Uh, <laughs> like, you, you that good. shit. I'm we, actually so scared for this, but. We, we Canadian. Yeah, so. You're good, you're good. You guys pray for me, please. Pray for Nina. Hashtag pray for me. <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, back to what we were talking about. Yeah. Um, we're talking about what? We're talking about what? Iggy or Tyson, Tyson Beckford. Beckford. All right. Yeah, we were just about to get into it. Yeah, so what do you? what are your thoughts on that? Um, okay, yeah, so, well, we didn't explain it. Oh, no, we kind of no, sort of did. Yeah, this, that, I, already, I already explained it. He, he, this is Kanye. He calls Kanye a fuckboy, and then he edited an emoji with the eggplant emoji attached to the guy in Kim Kardashian's face. This, oh, mouth. In yeah, mouth. in so, her mouth. So he's basically dropping dick in her mouth. Yeah, well, like, he also called, he also said something about Kim Kardashian's body being constructed and how he didn't like it, and that's why Kanye, when Kanye went on mm-hmm. that rant addressing Drake and Nick Cannon, he also came at Tyson, too. Yeah. Um... I don't, I don't really feel a way about this. Like, I feel like, like nobody, nobody is going to, and I said this before on the podcast, nobody takes any of this shit with Kim seriously because everyone saw her get fucked on camera. Everyone saw her suck dick on camera. Mm. So this is just like, it just pokes fun at the fact that, yeah. Well, she, hold on, hold on. You guys, you guys got to give Kim some credit, right? I love, don't get me wrong. No, no, I'm not, no, I'm saying you got to give her some credit because she w- she was with her boyfriend. <laughs> she was with her boyfriend. <laughs> she get him. It wasn't like she was like. It's not like no Paris Hilton, Fair Abrams type shit. Fair she Abraham. she was legit with her boyfriend. Her boyfriend was like, "Oh fuck it, let's make a sex tape." Yeah, but and like, then there's like them flying in a private jet together type shit. That's fine. Like that's totally fine. And it was with her boyfriend, cool. But that's what I'm saying. No one's gonna take. take oh, the her boyfriend seriously. was rigid. Let's just not just not forget his name. Yeah, we, we know. Say, say hashtag <laughs> say, say his name. Say, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> He's so stupid. <laughs> <laughs> nah but like she like that's the thing no one's gonna take her seriously because everyone already saw her like everybody's already saw her yeah. like they saw all of her so it like nobody takes it seriously i feel like and nobody takes kanye yeah. damn near seriously after all this fuck shit he's been talking about so yeah. i don't think this is obviously kanye has a right to be mad about yeah. it and whatever but like to the outside world everyone's laughing at it i'm laughing at it that the uh, tyson beckford with the eggplant then yeah yeah, that's kind of disrespectful, though. I mean, why? I think Tyson Beckford, he's pressing the issue. You, you, so most people will go like, you know what? I right, bet. Chill. I'm a, not even I right, bet I'm a chill, but there's nothing more I can really get out of this situation. Yeah. That Now he's the only one pressing the issue. Drake didn't he's, say nothing. Maybe Nick, he's trying to stay relevant. 
But isn't he a model? What is? Yeah, what I was gonna say. What does he do? He's a model. Uh, the fuck you trying to stay relevant for? I think I'm confusing him with that other guy, Tyson. Uh, what's the one who with the lisp in his teeth and he has that tattoo on his face? Oh, you talking about Mike Tyson? Mike Tyson. That's what I'm confusing him with. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, Tyson Beckford. He's most definitely pressing the issue. He should just chill out because now you're doing that. You disrespected this man. This man. You disrespected this man's wife. Yeah. Again. After he told you, yo, you better just keep my wife, my wife out your mouth. Don't, you know, don't do nothing. And then there he goes. But even though, like, it's like. Oh, did you also see the picture where he, had, where he was the guy from the red car? Yeah, yeah, and yeah. And it was Ricky? <laughs> Boys in the hood. Yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. That's fucked up. Um, but I also think that uh, Kanye, like, it's uh, it's very. What's the word that I'm looking for? I don't remember. No. Oh, yeah. Okay. So even though Kanye told him like don't come at him again, he's still like he's still a laughing stock to everybody right now. So Kanye. Yeah. So nobody's taking anything he says seriously. Nobody Man. cares for what he has to say. He's having lunch with Donald Trump on Thursday. Yeah. The 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 West are are close personal friends with Trump. I don't. Mm. Kim Kardashian West is freeing black people, and Kanye West is is trying to help uplift black people. No, he's not. Yeah, he is. He's not trying to help uplift black people. Yeah, he like, is. Him to support Donald Trump. He, the, Donald Trump is the man who openly said hateful things about black and brown people. So see, the thing is, what Kanye is trying to do, he's trying to mend fences. He's trying to get Colin Kaepernick over. Oh, well, this is a great segue. No, exactly. Yeah. Well, he's trying to. <laughs> Kanye West is trying to get uh, Colin Kaepernick. And Donald Trump to meet together inside the White House to squash the whole, what, what do we call him? An asshole? Bastard? The jackass? Yeah, son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. All right. Yeah. I, mean, I was totally off. Yeah. He's trying to squash that. See, look at that. See, a real person would step back and go like, you know what? It's better to be together than divided in a situation like this. In times like this where everyone is against the the, the president who's going to be in office for the next, what, two more years, right? Mm-hmm. I think so. I, instead, of being, like instead of being... Divided and saying fuck Donald Trump, I don't fuck, I don't fucking like this guy. Might as well work with him, you know what I mean? You it's, remember that saying is like, what, what was that thing? Change, change everything that you don't have the power to, that you have the power to change, and then understand that you what what's that, what's that fucking work? I don't know. What that is like? Change things that you can, and under and things you can't change. Understand that you can, you gotta understand adapt. I don't know what the fuck it is. Well, well fuck it. If my Andrew said that shit, let me look for it. Okay, you look for that. But like, so, what I'm basically trying to say, oh okay. yeah, no, no, continue. What I'm basically trying to say is that instead of trying to be divided, instead of trying to be distant, at least try to work with him. And so Colin Kaepernick was off. He's obviously doing something to try to help back black people. That's why he took the knee. And he's trying to you know recognize that ble- pr- police brutality is happening in these communities. And that's why I took the knee. So might as well having a sit if they both of them had a sit down in front of each other going like hey, you know what this is what my stance is this is what my stance is why i called you a jack or ask what do you call it a son of a bitch son of a bitch like son of a bitch and this is why i took the knee and they have a cordial understanding in front of each other you know things would be a lot better if hitler or no let me say not say hitler but if two people who are beefing or have an issue if they don't have a middle a middle person which is kanye and and asking them to come together this would probably help a lot more things but dumbass ebro Yes, that's what I was gonna get. Dumbass to. Ebra, I don't know why he said nah, we're not gonna do it. I gotta come with well, you. I gotta come with you. Nah, fuck that. So so yeah, so Ebro, like Kanye's people called Ebro, and then Kanye called Ebro Ebro talking about, oh, I wanna meet up with Kaepernick, whatever, yeah. like can you hook it up? And Ebro said, No, I'm not hooking it up. Um, I don't think that's a bitch move. Because why, you, why, why you because why is he gonna get involved in the middle of this between Colin and Kanye? Um, when Colin damn well knows that Kanye is trying to meet up with him, it's everywhere, it's all over the internet. Yeah. Colin has obviously seen it. Um, and if he really wants to meet with Kanye and um meet with Trump, he'll reach out to, to Kanye himself. Why right, wouldn't so, he? So here's the quote. If you don't like something, change it. If you can't change it, change your attitude. Well, okay, so why can't Trump change his attitude? Oh, stop it. So, listen, so <laughs> Trump, so obviously Trump called Kaepernick a son of a bitch yeah. and blames him for ruining America type shit, like yeah. like something along those lines, mm-hmm. whatever. Why the fuck would he want to even, like, why would Kaepernick even want to meet somebody who thinks that way about him? Like, he we, knows Trump's true colors, and nine times out of ten, when I've noticed when Trump has, like, met with people, whatever, he'll just go back onto Twitter and talk shit about them, like, the next day after he meets them. A hundred percent, that's what's going to happen with Colin Kaepernick. 
Trump has fucking Twitter fingers. He's a pussy. He won't say shit Whoa. to your face. He'll say it behind your back. Whoa. That's literally, that's literally it. He'll just put it on Twitter. Okay. And I, that's why I don't think it's wrong if Kaepernick doesn't want to meet with, with Trump. Cool, so be it. I don't think Ebro should have to be obligated to be in the middle of it. Yeah, I, I don't even know why Ebro should like, you know what? Let me just connect you with, with him. And if he wants to come, he can come. He's a grown ass fucking man. Yeah. Colin so, is a grown ass fucking man. I don't know, man. I just think it's, uh, I don't think, uh, I don't really think it matters if Kanye was to meet with Trump. I mean, or if Kaepernick was to meet with Trump. Yeah. Because I don't think it's going to change anything. I think it would. I think- Trump has started. I saw online today. Trump started selling football jerseys that say, um, like, stand for America. And they have you know, Trump on the back. I don't know why people are afraid to talk to Trump. Talk to the man. He's your fucking president. And he's get. And the thing is, this is the most I've seen. A Ob- uh, the most I've seen a president open their door to celebrities, especially yes. artists and things like that. Obama. Fuck out of here. Okay, Obama had like how many people come to the White House? Obama, and like a, yeah, not a lot but of people. Trump has the thing is like you don't want to talk to somebody who has a hateful, negative attitude. Why would you want to? I think if you're hateful towards me, if you tell me, if, okay, if you were to sit here and Apollo doesn't feel like this, but if you were to sit here and tell me that you fucking hate Indian people and you yeah. think they all smell like curry and they yeah. they smell like shit and they can't speak English and yeah. this and that, whatever, okay. Um, I'm not going to want to meet with you because mm-hmm. I'm gonna be like, you're fucking ignorant. Mm-hmm. That's literally what Trump has done. Well, well and uh, why would anybody want to meet with that? Because you got to, like, you remember, you remember here reading that, um, not reading, but you remember that song by Jordan Lucas? Yeah. I'm uh, not a racist. Yeah. I'm not a racist. Okay. That was a fucking great, uh, I didn't listen to it. Did you watch a video at least? Nope. What the fuck, Nina? <laughs> I don't. I watched one of his videos once. It was a little too graphic for me. Okay, so that video right there, that that song, is a great is a great depiction of why two sides should come together and at least have a conversation. At the end of it, is like, I said my piece, you said your piece. We may we may have a different perspective on each other at the end of the conversation, but it, it shows that there's growth. And both of them are willing to listen to each other. Mm-hmm. Uh, disagreement, stereotypes, ignorance, ignorant uh, perception of them, and then correct it by saying, this is where I'm from, this is where I'm coming from, and this is why I stand on what I stand on. And if we can't have that in 2018, where two people are opposing sides can go like, hey, let's have a conversation. No bad words, no interruption, just you hear my side. I'll hear your side, and at the end of it, if we still disagree, we disagree. But now we at least have an understanding that I'm not too afraid to see you, uh, see you, and look you in your eyes and tell you where I'm coming from, and vice versa. I I get it. I just don't see um like Trump has this attitude where he knows he has he's the most powerful man almost in the entire world. Yeah. He has he has all the power over the most powerful country in the world. This is true. Um, so Trump is the kind of guy who he holds that power to to. I guess to his value, like he connects it, um, kind of like how you were saying earlier with the guy who bought us all our food. It's a, a to show your status it's of power. A power move. Yes. So I feel like Trump has done like he has that kind of a shit attitude where it's like you can never see him as an equal. Like you can never see eye to eye with him. Yeah. He's always going to be looking down on you, mm. especially because of his views on colored people in general mm. um, and immigrants and stuff like mm. and for somebody who's standing up for those people. Like, to, to be able to talk to him, I don't see Kaepernick and Trump talking and it going well at all. It's Especially not- now, today, after seeing that fucking Trump's petty asses over here selling football jerseys. Sometimes if you like, if you what? nip it in the butt as soon as possible, this shit probably wouldn't happen. Yeah, well, <laughs> but that's what I mean. For a, a fucking, how old is he? Like, 70? Like, yeah. a 70-year-old man a business to be man, acting though. like this? Like, He's a businessman. Nah, and cap- and America re- is built on fucking that's capitalism. That's ridiculous. Like, capitalism. I, just, I don't know. I think it's fucked up. And I don't think Kaepernick talking to him would even go anywhere. Well. Like he would. brainwashed the fuck out of Kanye. So I don't know. Kanye's not happen. brainwashed. I think because Obama called him an asshole. And also Kanye said that Obama, after he spoke to Obama, he didn't, he didn't follow up on the things that he said. So Kanye is going like, you know what, Obama, you ain't really doubt all that popping. And the thing is, now that Obama left the res- uh, pres- uh, what's it called, president presidency, presidential office. Yeah, a lot of people, not a lot of people, but people I'm hearing people get more vocal about the things that the bad that Obama has done. And then I feel like also black people in America, when Obama was in place, they they more they they so they looked at Obama as more so of a as a win for all of us, not mm-hmm. rather as what 
what Obama could really do for us. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, Obama won! It's fucking <laughs> black people lit on here. But instead of going like, oh shit, we, all right, we finally have a black president in the office. Now what can we make him do things for us? And yeah. and what happened those eight years that he was in presidency, like nothing but police killings happened. It's fine. It's weird. I'm hearing a lot less police killings happen nowadays, though. In the states, yeah, like they're not be. I'm not. They're not like national news. I was like, what the <laughs> like fuck? Pa- the past eight years, when a cop killed someone else, it was national news. You know, I don't. Funny enough, no, I don't really like. Give me a uh somebody who got killed by a cop. Give me a name of somebody Alton while Sterling? Obama was in. Alton Sterling. Obama was still in. Yeah, Mike Brown. He was. Uh, Oh, Alden Sterling, shit, yeah, you're Alden. right. He was still in that. Yeah. I, w- I want to be right. Alden Sterling. And, I didn't think of it. Uh, Tamir Rice. Uh, Tamir, I thought Tamir Rice was recent. No, was he? Uh, no, Tamir Rice is like from. No, he was like the young kid that got. Damn. And then what about the dude that was selling Lucy's outside in New York? Uh, something gray. Uh, and then we also got uh, Trayvon Martin. We got Mike Brown. Yeah. Okay, never mind. Yeah. You're right. All the, yeah, never mind. You're right. You're it was right. crazy. Yeah, but that's not necessarily uh, all of a sudden a good thing that it's not national news anymore because that could just mean society has become so desensitized to it. The world yeah. has become so desensitized to the fact that this shit happens in America. It happens in other places too, but this shit's happening in America so often that it's not national anymore. Mm-hmm. Because um, Mike Brown, that was Skittle, the one with the Skittles and the... The, no, no, no. That was Trayvon Obama. Martin. Mike Trayvon Brown Martin, was a yeah. dude that was in Missouri or okay. Mississippi. Okay, Trayvon Martin was the first one I remember hearing about, but I was like, mm-hmm. "Whoa, um, like this shit is really happening." Because for me, I know black people always say like, for them, this isn't a surprise because this has been going on for years. Yeah. But for me, it was a surprise because I'm not, I'm not black. I didn't, I genuinely didn't know that mm-hmm. like this was a real thing that was going on in the world, and yeah. I, I will admit to that. Um, so for me. Trayvon Martin was the one where I was like, holy shit, like this. And then it just kept going and going and going. And now it's become so desensitized that it's like, it, it, it's not necessarily a good thing to me that it's not national news. Mm-hmm. So. Hey, man, man, this is the world that we live in. But uh, also, let's say, let's just get into this real quick. So mm-hmm. Bette Midler, yes. <laughs> she said, women are the N-word of the world. Uh, and then I looked at that. She's white, know, by the way, you guys. She's, yeah, she's white. She's old, dated. Yeah. Crazy Wait, woman. what's her profession? What's her title? I don't know. I'm going to find A out. A politician, probably? I think some sort of um, political figure. She oh, said, no. She's an entertainer. No, she said that. She, she old and washed. She said that on Twitter. She said, women are the N-word of the world. She said, yep. And I looked at that and I was like... Hold on, how how badly treating our black people? She said, women are the N-word of the world, raped, beaten, enslaved, married off, worked like dumb animals, yeah. denied education and inheritance, enduring the pain and danger of childbirth, and live in silence for thousands of years. They are the most disrespected creatures on earth. Um, I looked at that and I was like, hold on, how fucking bad are black people treated in this world that you guys, you got to compare see, uh, women to the N-word of the world? That's crazy to me because at the end of the day, you still can't compare being a woman to being a black person because at the end of the day, I mean, black, black people are still treated worse. And there is, exactly, there is there is black women so who are treated about, the worst of the worst. about white women. <laughs> like, right? There's, there's black women who are treated the absolute worst because they are women and they are black. Like, that's mm. literally what it is. Yeah. So, for her to say that is so ignorant. Yeah. And, like, it it really just goes to show, like, her... It sh- goes to show you her white privilege that yeah. she's experienced in the world. That she thinks that's what it's like to be yeah. treated like a black person when she has damn near no idea. I have no idea. Yeah. Like, you know what I mean? So, she can't even say that she has an idea of what it feels like to be treated like a black person. Like, that, to me, was just... I was like, yo, right, you yeah. let's are get, let's get let's, stupid. Let's get into this. You know what? Let's fuck it. Let's break down feminism. Because feminism is not for <laughs> black women, all right? Stop. All you black women that want to be... All right, you know, first off, the, the principles of feminism, I respect all of that. Okay. Because, you know, women are getting disrespected. I'm not. I'm talking about all nationalities, all ethnics, and all Greek creeds and religions. All, mm-hmm. of, them, all of them are getting disrespected worldwide. But feminism... This 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 wave of feminism that's happening in, in the Western Hemisphere world is not for you, black women, bro. Like if a woman, Bette Miller, if she was willing to say women are the N word of the world, you know what that means? That means white women are not treated justly exactly. am, amongst the other white men. She's talking essentially. She's talking down on black women. Yes. At the end of the day, because she's she's double she's double crossing and almost yeah. like she's saying 
when there's there's obviously black women in this world yeah. so she's saying women are treated like the n-word of the world yeah. black women are referred to as the n-word by yeah. ignorant fucks so she she literally double crossed it yeah she's, like, she's going off what's that thing called patriarchal patriarchal views yeah off of that shit and she sees like the women are just less than the men she's going like women are the n-word of the world she's like, she said that i don't know what the fuck what she was thinking when she said that shit but feminine <laughs> Feminism is not for the black woman, all right? You guys, you guys stand, a lot of these black women stand by that whole feminism shit. Dude, though, we're feminists, we stand on that, we all of that shit. And then look at that. You have a woman <laughs> who fully tweeted, yeah. a white woman at that, the white woman who started the shit and then adopted the black woman into it so they can still move forward in them damn selves. So the black women were never incorporated inside the white feminism ideology, all right? Mm-hmm. So, with that being said, you you this is what happens. You gave us a lot of black women gave themselves a double whammy. It's like, oh shit, I'm just gonna try to stand with women. But when the white women were like, nah, bitch, we don't really want you. You're just gonna help us catapult what we have going on a little further. But you're still mm-hmm. behind us. And so when she says and women are the and women are the n-word of the world, it's like, yeah, it's you. It's you. You are the n-word of the world. Yep. And we we feel like some something like you, although women are not really treated that poorly, I would say. Uh, well, then again, I don't know. Uh I mean, like at the end of the day, women are treated always less equal than men. Yeah. That's just how it's been. But um, that's still this not. Bitch is this old comparison and Aggie? is ridiculous. Like it, this it, is literally the most ignorant of comparisons that you could make in this day and age, especially. Yeah. And I think it really, it truly, honestly, really just goes to show you her white privilege yeah. and how she has come, how she has lived her life mm-hmm. for her to only now for her to say something like this like it just i can't even like it's not even i feel like i still haven't even gotten the point across fully like yeah. i feel like there's not even enough words to fully explain the fact that this doesn't make any sense yeah and you know, the fucked up part of it is i i also blame feminism for this shit yeah feminism fe- feminism some type of cocked up concept i'm not saying it's cocked up concept but mm-hmm. The, the way that I don't even know what feminism is anymore. I can't even say the word right, right? If I can't say it right No, now. I'm laughing because I, I'm like I'm with you on that. Like, I don't know. I, I stand for women's rights and stuff, and there's shit that I stand for, but I don't know. I truly, honestly, if you looked at me and said, like, what is the definition of feminism? I couldn't tell yeah, you. Yeah, see, exactly, right? And I I'm couldn't. I'm confused because whatever type of feminism... Fe- oh, I can't say the fucking Feminism. Word. Feminism, whatever type of feminism she's feminism. on... <laughs> she's on it, it, it was enough to dilute her brains and go like, you know what, let me tweet that women are the N-word of the world and that shit makes sense to me. Yeah. And because think about it, when you tweet, you got to type that shit and yeah. you're like, yo, this makes sense and to re- me. Yo, I bet you her stupid ass had the N-word spelt out yeah. in the first <laughs> in the like, first round and then erased yeah. it and was like, fuck, I can't yeah. say that. I could bet you any money that's what the tweet looked yeah. like beforehand. She thought this made sense. <laughs> the thing is, she thought this made sense. She thought when she tweeted that she thought everyone would get it. To her white her white woman probably didn't yeah. get it. To her, for to her white feminism, yeah. That made sense to her. Yeah. And when she tweeted out that shit, it was like, what's the she's issue? Proud, yeah. yeah. She was like, Yes, I did something. Man, good she's old, feminism. she's old and aggy, bro. Like yeah, fuck this bitch. That shit was wild. Yeah. Shit. I'm saying that wild. with the whole lot. All right, so uh moving forward. Can we talk about um uh Vic Mensa? Well, what do you want to talk about? I was going to say Vic Mensa, or I was going to say uh, your little hot take here. Okay, so I have about a hot... The about the Okay, so I have a, I have a hot take. Mm-hmm. Well, okay, so let's it, start... Is it really a hot... You know what? Fuck, I'm not... It's not... I think it's 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 a, it's a theory. It's a theory that I've developed uh, these past few days, and yes. I think I'm on to something. Okay, go ahead. So, as like I said, as the past few days were going by, I was on YouTube, right? Mm-hmm. And and just in general, I've seen a lot of just shit regarding hoes and just whole type behavior and things like that, and women claiming to be hoes and slut walking and, and and just a whole bunch of shit. So I was on YouTube, uh, and I used to fuck with hoes. <laughs> <laughs> so <laughs> let me just not leave that out there. <laughs> I was gonna say I used to be a hoe oh, as a joke, but y'all would take that seriously. Yeah, so. yeah. hoe shame <laughs> slut. A oh, hold on, the Amarose, the Amarose slut walk happened this past yes, weekend. Yes, it did. So yeah, apparently they're doing like a deep dildo sucking contest. So what? I don't know. I never saw it. I kind of want to go just to see what the atmosphere is like. Same here. I want to go too. I let's go. See let's do a podcast from there uh, next year. No, <laughs> <laughs> not doing that. Uh, so, uh, so this is what happened, right? I go on YouTube. There's like this. YouTuber named Morana in in Japan, right? Okay. 
YouTube algorithm fucked up. I guess because I was watching Sagittarius. Sergeant, <laughs> That's what I was gonna and say. then I was like, they probably just like, oh, this guy just wants to look at these hoes videos. I'm like, all right, cool. So I, I go to that. And she's talking about how to get dick in Japan. Okay. Is she Asian or is she? No, nah, she's black and Mexican. Okay. She's from the United States. She, she, went, o- she went over to Japan. She's like 18, 19 now. Sure. And she went over there for school because she wanted to go there. But she's a hoe. She claims to be a hoe. Can you really be a hoe in Japan? Uh, she getting dick. That's what she's saying. Okay. She said she fucked, sucked over like Actually, Japanese dick. people are very, like, freaky. Amen. Yeah, yeah. Don't they make, like, anime pornos and stuff? And I swear they have this, like... It's called have, Tenati. They what, have what some called next, Tenati? like, broth shit. It's called hentai. And sex dolls and stuff. Okay. Yeah. Okay, never mind. I take it back. So, she's over there, right? And she disrespected the hell out of those guys. It's like, all oh, those guys have small dicks. Well, I love small dicks. Bring oh them over here. God. And then he, they're like, yo, she disrespected the hell out of a small... Them. Crazy. But she said she fucks with small dicks. Okay. Maybe she just finds it easier. Yeah. Yeah. Who knows? Uh, what's, What can I... So, yeah, so she she said she sucked, like, over 50 dicks or something. Mm-hmm. Fucked her or something. Like, while she was in Japan? I don't know. She, she said suck 50 dicks. Oh. In yeah. a lifetime, I guess like, that's... Uh, not I don't. She's our fucking at seventeen, and she's nineteen. Yeah. Oh, oh shit! So she sucked fifty dicks. Maybe, maybe, maybe she more. started sucking dick beforehand. Maybe more. Maybe more. Okay. But so, think, see, I'm not. I'm not. This is not me trying to shame her. Yeah. So this is me. I'm listening. I'm. I'm intrigued. Okay. I'm intrigued not because I was like, oh, I'm disgusted. It's like, all right, let's see what this is in for. Let me let me see what you have to say. Now that you have this little platform that you have in front of you, you're talking to people that could probably relate or other people who want to live through you vicarious because mm-hmm. of your actions and things like that. So I'm not when the whole starts talking about their sex life. I'm not intrigued because it's not like, oh shit, I'm 17. I've never heard this before. Like I'm, I'm mid 20s, yo. All that shit is not new to me, right? Mm-hmm. I'm listening to him like, yeah, he's not really saying nothing. Yeah, I'm not, he's not really saying nothing. But I, as I, I'm still intrigued because I want to know what she, what she really getting out there. Uh, she gets to this one video. It's like she's talking about how she has like BDSD. Borderline, borderline personality disorder. Like she oh, takes, that's not BDSM. What I said. BDSM is some like sex shit. Oh, yeah. So she, so she has like mental illness, right? She has anxiety, depression. She takes psychosis pills, uh-huh. and I'm like, oh, I think I'm onto something. And then I go back to the, I remember back to some of the hoes I fucked. Some of them have anxiety, depression. <laughs> what's it called? Mood swing? Not mood swings. Um, personality disorder. Not what's that thing? Next one. Uh, not personality disorder. Anxiety, depression, bipolar. Bipolar, yeah, bipolar. Uh, I'm thinking like other chicks. Oh, all, all these chicks that talk about having mad sex. Whatever mm-hmm. they, they're yo. I'm saying that they're mentally ill. Okay. They all have that one thing in common. These girls that are all really out here trying to fuck, and then they claim that when they fuck, it's more it's emotionless to me. Them type of chicks, they have no. Them type of chicks have a mental illness. I'm, I, I hold on, all them, all them girls. All ask all those girls who are hoeing out there, going like, I just be fucking because it's fun. I ask them, bitch, yo, you have anxiety, you have depression, you have bipolar, you have a pulse, you have psychosis and type of shit with schizophrenia type shit, yeah. borderline personality disorder, personality disorder, a whole bunch of other shit. Um, I wanted to, I wanted to write down a whole bunch of my other findings. But I, I, I wanted to be a little well, bit more eloquent with my stuff. So, like, my thing is with this, like, I see what you're saying. And I see yeah. how there could possibly be a connection. Yeah. Um, only because, like, most people assume that, like, hoes have, like, daddy issues or mm-hmm. something, you know? Like, that's what most people are assuming. So, to me, it's like I see where there's a possible connection. Maybe hoes just want to be loved. Low key. Or high key. <laughs> or maybe they just want to feel like they're wanted or something. At the end of the day, like, realistically, everybody just wants to feel like they're wanted by someone. Mm-hmm. So that could be it. Um, I There's even, like, there's Obsessive one... compulsive disorder. A lot, of the, a lot of the hoes like to be clean. I swear uh, I have OCD. Yeah. I'm not diagnosed. I haven't been located. Okay, a, <laughs> a lot of these hoes always want to have certain things inside the house touched a certain way. No, right, but... Post-traumatic stress disorder. Most definitely these hoes got that. PTSD from that dick. I'm joking. Oh, whoa. <laughs> Panic disorder. 
<laughs> what else is there? They got social anxiety. A lot of these hoes be social anxiety. Like, they got some social anxiety I disorder. social anxiety. I'm saying. I'm saying. What else is there? I'm looking at all of them. Some of these hoes got eating disorder as well. Okay, but that's what I'm Bulimia. saying. Like, a lot of these girls who are just fucking any and everyone just want to be wanted by somebody. And, like, obviously the dudes who are fucking them are just fucking them because they're like, oh, it's easy, whatever. Self-defeating person- personality disorder. Maybe they just want to be wanted by someone temporarily so they don't have to deal with the emotional attachments of having to be emotionally attached to somebody because it's worse when your heart breaks versus when passive aggressively personality disorder this is no i i i get Yo, it all these hoes got some bro but so like i'm not try, i'm of, not trying to shame them though no but this kind of relates to me like this kind of relates to this whole amber rose and like black china like uh, constantly being with new dudes and stuff all the time. You know what? I think because they're in the business, they're, it works out in their favor because the business love to shame women who have bo- different boyfriends. But honestly, dumb t- don't I honestly when I look at those type of chicks, yeah. I'm gonna be honest with everyone who's listening, right? Yeah. Them type of chicks, they probably get the less amount of dick out there. You know why? Because they have to have someone of status. <laughs> yeah, they, their image is that they get the most amount of dick. It's the chicks that get. It's the chicks that the chicks that get the most amount of dick are the ones that aren't like you look at them. It's like all right, whatever. You pass them by. Like those are the type of chicks that get the most amount of dick. Yeah, but it's the ones that you. It's the ones that you automatically project that yo, they're hot and they have a whole bunch of men throwing themselves at you. Amber Rose and Black China look like they get a whole bunch of dick and all. I know Black China gets a whole bunch. Of, she has a new boyfriend every fucking week. That shit for sure. Uh, that shit for sure. Honestly, I feel like that shit for sure. I don't feel like none of them chicks like they really be fucking. It's just be like but Amber Rose is using a lot of these guys. I honestly, I feel like that Amber Rose is just using these certain guys just to, to leverage her, leverage her appeal, get talked about in the media. Like I don't think maybe, she really fucking like that. Um, I don't know. I just think that. I mean, I guess like where you're coming from with this whole hose having mental issues. And they do stuff. not that me- mental. Sorry, 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 sorry. Disorders. Sorry. Mental disorders. They mental have men- health problems. Mental health problems. There, there we go. go. These hoes do really got that shit. Mm-hmm. Well, I can I, see I, it. I, can't, I, can't I can see it only because I was gonna say as a hoe, but I don't mean like <laughs> I don't mean I don't mean I'm a hoe. I mean like, say it, say it, say, no, say but it I mean chest. I mean like you. You like everybody wants to feel wanted at the end of the day, and I feel like yeah. with hoes, yeah, like I said, you don't want to be emotionally attached to somebody because you know that getting your heart broken is ten times worse than um not having any feelings and just getting to be temporarily wanted. So temporarily filling a void yeah. feels better than fulfilling a void and then having it ripped out of you and then having to deal with being alone for the next couple of years when you don't know how to. You told That's what mental I feel disorders like and. I'm starting to feel like it's starting to it's starting to link. It's starting to all make sense to me, man. It's like hold on, it's like you having mad sex. I'm not saying there's nothing wrong with sex, mm-hmm. but like you having mad sex, and then you at the end of it, you always you have these lists of just mental disorders that are wrong with you, just things that you're just battling with inside yourself. And, okay, but what are we defining as a hoe? Can we like clear that first? <laughs> somebody <is> who, <laughs> like, are we talking about somebody who is posting up on Instagram half naked all the time? Are we no, no, no. About I'm talking about. I'm talking about sex with everyone. I'm talking about the real deal, holy field. Them, them <laughs> super promiscuous women who are in it for the 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 chemical imba- the chemical re- balance of sex. The, the, okay. All right. So hold, let me read something for you. Okay. So what sex does, right? If, yes. When you have mental disorder. Because re- remember when we were... Let me say this again. Remember when we were speaking about mental disorders and depression and all that? It's a chemical imbalance in yes. the brain. I did yes. say that, right? Yes, yes, yes. And what sex does, it... Balances or adds chemicals. Em- it, like endorphins and yes. other type of shit that kind of make you feel like in a euphoria. Like exercising. Yeah. And so when you have a mental disorder okay. and it's obviously a chemical imbalance in the brain, when you have sex, right consistent amount of sex it's like being high it kind of take it kind of suppresses the depression or all the other type of illnesses mm-hmm. for a temporary moment okay. until you're able to get the next dick or the fixing i'm not talking about and also men can be hoes as well because yeah, men suffer uh, from, men are all the biggest hoes half the time maybe that maybe those type of men are actually suffering from the worst man maybe but they never they never want to open up that ain't my fault hey man it's the society's fault <laughs> that so, is a fact it's the society's fault <laughs> All right, so I remember this thing. Oh, I don't even have the link no more. Oh, no, I do have the link. All right, so this is what happened. Sex gives a sort of chemical high, 
And it's probably becomes addictive because you're suffering from an underlying depression, which the which is the buzz words, which the buzz wears off. Oh, hold on. Oh, when, which the buzz. Okay, yeah. Which when the buzz wears off. No, well, it says which the buzz wears off, so okay. it wasn't written the best. Yeah, I'm. I get it. I can agree. I can't say like confirm all hoes have mental health problems. You can't confirm that, but I'm, I'm I that. see the trend. Is what I'm. That's trying my. To that's say. My, my. That's my theory. I could see it. And I can see it for logical reasoning. Um, That's my theory, though. Yeah, I think I think I'm, I think my theory makes a lot more sense, right? Yeah. Because if, like I said, depression is a chemical imbalance in the brain, and when you have sex, it gives you a chemical high, so it's yes. kind of restoring the imbalance that you already have. Yeah, yeah, it's adding to, yeah. to help you out. So if you, you have like daddy abandonment issues, you so grew do up you in think a loveless like, home. Bodybuilders have mental health. You think that you do, do? I think because, they have mental yeah, health because working out gives you that um, boost of I think it's uh, what's endorphins. It endorphins. Gives you that, those endorphins, and a lot of people work out first thing in the morning so, so they can be happy all day. I do that. But would you, would you, hold on. Why, why would you say that would be someone would be uh, a bodybuilder? Because yeah. you're always working out. Mm. You know what I'm saying? Well, what if you can't you start on like a lot of people can't they start on the medium where they're not even in balance where where they have endorphins that get more so it gives them a high and then restores them back to a balance. Couldn't that couldn't that also be a thing too? But if you're adding more endorphins than you already have endorphins, or you mean like a nor- like average average amount mm-hmm. and then adding endorphins and yeah. give them a high? I guess. But like bodybuilders are like in the gym for like six hours a day. That's a lot Because it's a job. At that point, it's, you're making income off of it. Mm, I don't know. I think I think when you start making income off of it, it makes it it makes it different. Okay, I tried a thing. It yeah, you tried work. one. <laughs> you tried one. Um, Appar- apparently, because I'm an old I'm an old positive blood. Uh, apparently, also in Japan and like the eastern certain countries that they really knowing your blood type actually defines your personality. Do you know really? this? I actually have no idea what mine is. I'm a I'm a old, I'm an old positive. Uh, uh, I don't know what I am. I'll ask my mom tonight. Yeah, so I'm O positive, right? And so O positive are kind of like the most common of people. And um, just because the way I am, people look at me as like a, a trusting person and maybe a more active person. <laughs> but also it leaves me, it leaves also me being O positive, it allows me not to get certain like diseases and shit like that. Like Really? I mean, like some type of thing that happens in your stomach. I won't get Ulcers? that. Ulcers? I don't know, some type of shit. Where because my blood cells... Are not doesn't have little sticky things okay. where I can attach on the thing, so it's, it's stickless type of thing. So like things are not gonna get attached to my bloods and stuff like that. Okay. Yeah. Um. And, and also, if you're a B, if you're like a, I feel like bl- I'm a B. If you're a B, ble- a B blood type, it's also looked at as you're a lazy person. Damn. I hope I'm not a B. Yeah. So this is, I looked at that stuff on online. I found it pretty interesting after I figured out my blood type. I was uh, like, oh, shit, can blood really define my personality? Well, it's just like it's just like, like Zodiac sign. Yeah, that's what I was just going to say. That shit don't it's really, like that. What's yeah. your sign? Uh, Virgo. Uh, yeah. I'm a Scorpio. Yeah. I hope my woman crush is not doesn't believe in Virgo. It doesn't believe in Zodiacs. You know, I don't believe in it. Sometimes I believe in it for other people, but I do believe in most of the traits that they talk about with Scorpios. That is true for me. I think it's, I think the whole thing is just an eclectic thing. I don't know, man. Scorpios are known for like certain things. Like what? Uh, anger issues I mean. and trust issues and. Um, they're also supposed to be like raging sex fanatics, but I don't know if I'm like a raging sex fanatic. I mean, I think we, we, we live in the 21st century where a lot of people are raging sex fanatics. Yeah. (laughs) It's like, wow, that could apply to anybody. A lot of people really do talk about having trust issues. Yeah. But like, it's like, nah, it's different. What what else do you say about your your shit? Um, I feel like those are the big ones. Uh Those are the three big ones. Well, I don't think you're that special, or I don't think you're that close to your zodiac sign. I feel like I am. I think you're kind of close to my shit. Why? What's your shit? I don't know. <laughs> you're a perfectionist, no? Are you? Yeah, I am. A exactly. My shit's a perfectionist too. Okay. My, a lot of people say I'm emotional. I'm not that emotionless. Very, I don't know what the fuck you shit. I don't believe none of that shit. You kind are kind of emotionless. Stop it. Not like emotionless. Like you, you, you detach yourself from having emotions i could see that stop it my mom grew up like i grew i took i take everything from my mama yo so (laughs) think about that i take everything from my mom in the sense that i think i have like i think i become emotionally attached because my mom 
spent so much time with me as a child. Mm-hmm. Um, like I'm when I tell you, I kid you not. From when I was in preschool all the way up until grade one, my mom volunteered at my school every single day. She was a stay at home mom. Shout out to you. Volunteered at my school every single day. So imagine going to school with your mom, being with your mom every single day from the day you were born until mm. you're six years old, and then six years old, all of a sudden you got to be in school by yourself. Man, I didn't. <laughs> My my pops wasn't what really much of my life. Yeah, I remember him coming on a field trip with us like one time to I think Pioneer Village, uh-huh. and I thought that shit was like amazing. Yeah, and then I remember him coming to my school every once in a while to drop off some food or pick me up or something to say mm-hmm. what's up. And then I'm not really close to my father. Does I don't he really still have, talk to you? No, I haven't spoken to him like since 2000. Jesus Christ! And uh, eleven. Damn. 2011. That's yeah. a long time. Yeah, but I haven't seen him, spoke to him. I don't know what his number is. I don't Why? know. Why? Hey, man. Oh, you don't have to expose him. Yeah, podcast. man. It wasn't. He wasn't cra- all cracked up that he, I thought he would be. He thought he wasn't the man that I thought he was mm-hmm. because I only saw him like only like in little bite sized parts of my life. Yeah. So when I got to th- got a lot of time to spend a lot of time with him, mm-hmm. I just realized that he wasn't the, the man that I thought he was, and he wasn't the man that he showed himself. He thought he was telling him telling about himself to me. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I was like. I don't really need you in my life type that. Damn. You know? I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah this man. got really hard. Right? Yeah. So. <laughs> <laughs> we don't got music to play. And we still don't got an intro for this fucking uh, podcast. Can we talk about uh, Terrence and Jasmine? Okay. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So Terrence. How, Je- how, how far are we? Hour 20? Uh, yeah. Hour 16. Okay. So. Hold, hold on. You, I don't want you passing through shit. Okay. Well, then there's more at the top then. You pass into a whole bunch. All right. So you want to talk about Vic Mensa? Because I feel like the Kanye and the homeless man is not. Kanye is a, a messiah. No, he's not. <laughs> giving a homeless a... guy a hundred dollars is nothing. He's a messiah. And uh, getting him to give him Yeezys. And he's like... trying to he's trying to fix the infrastructure in, in Chicago, <laughs> helping the kids out there. Nah. Oh, someone made I'm this great point. Like someone made this great point. He said Obama's from Osh- uh, or uh, Chicago. Oprah's from Chicago. Who else is from Chicago? Chance but, the Rapper. Chance, well, but no, Chance does stuff. No, stop, stop. Like, I'm talking about like the big, big people. Oprah, uh, Obama, Michelle Obama. Some other people are from... Oh, other people are from Chicago. And they don't do... <laughs> They don't do half the things Kanye has done in the last few but months. But sometimes I feel like Kanye does all this shit to repair his image. Because he's doing the absolute most right now when everyone's looking at him all kind of whack because of all this Trump shit he's saying. Man. And now he's is when he's doing the absolute most. Correct me if I'm wrong, but I don't remember Kanye doing damn near this much for Chicago before this. Hey, man, I see Obama. The thing he ever Obama did was, was the Bush president for eight like years. Black people. Obama was the president for eight years. And that's when we, that's when we really heard... O- 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 uh, Chicago's really cracking. <laughs> That's when we heard that shit was cracking. Yeah, but I didn't I see just, that man do nothing. I don't feel like he does it. Um, I just don't feel like he he did it before yeah. as much at all. Man, he's doing he's doing more things that than I don't know if this is true, but he they're saying that he's doing more things than Obama and Oprah Winfrey and some other people have done for Chicago. And I'm like, whoa, are you serious? Oprah Oprah, Oprah Winfrey has her whole shit set up in Chicago. And she don't even help out that many people. She, but do you think Oprah is helping? Hold on. Oprah, Oprah is helping them kids, them wild kids out in Africa. She built a school. Remember that? You free Wild ago? kids. Oh, my God. She wild kids out. I don't, I don't mean like wild. Like, <laughs> Yo, I, don't mean, I don't mean wild you, like disrespectful. You got <laughs> I don't mean wild like that. Uh, I, I, she, like, she helping the kids out in Africa. She built the whole house and all of that. Uh-huh. You know, Obama was doing some shit for other people around the country. <laughs> Kanye's coming through the town, walking through. Yo, give this man a hundred dollars. Give me your mama's name and your mama's address so I can send it to me easy. A homeless guy, by yeah. the way, guys. Yeah. Yeah, but uh, most that's people not... will walk away from that homeless man. Most people wouldn't even do, give what the, Kanye, what Kanye did, what we saw on film, what Kanye did to that homeless mm-hmm. man. You know how many people wouldn't do that? You but wouldn't you walk see, up to no fucking but, homeless but man. But you see, but you see where you just you just said a keyword right there on film. Yeah, think if that? the cameras weren't there, he would still do it. I think Fuck, so. No, I think so. I don't. I think so. I don't. I think because so. Because you know what? This is just a coincidence that TMZ was out there. First of all, how is this homeless guy's mom have a phone number? But He's in the streets. That kind of like. What are you talking about? Why doesn't he have a phone? The homeless guy, but his mom has a phone. He's home. He's a homeless fucking bum. So why can't his mom help him? She got enough money to pay for a phone line. Maybe Yo, she has some other N- sort Nina, of means Nina, to help after, him out. Nina, after a certain, <laughs> after a certain age, of you 
continuously showing that you have failed at life and a parent has we failed. We don't know that. Stop it. No, after stop it. After a certain age, after you have shown that you failed as an adult and the parent is witnessing their child fa- failing as an adult, the parent gets to a realization is like, I have failed as a parent and let me just cut you off from me. <laughs> and now she's going to get these Yeezys mailed to her front door for her uh, son and be like, damn, I really fucking failed as a parent because this guy is not asking Kanye for any sort of yeah. help in like getting a little a little rental apartment and getting his job back and should exactly, he ask right? for fucking Yeezys yeah, like exactly, right? what that's he, the world we live in today that's he's, fucking he, he crazy he failed as an adult and his parents failed to raise him that probably. is fucking crazy but I think like what he does right now that was amazing for Chicago I seen I seen a lot of people who are outside Chicago do a lot of great things for Chicago. Kanye, oh well, Kanye's from Chicago. But this is Tekashi what I'm trying to say. Takashi Six Nine gave away no, burgers. But, but wait a second, wait a second. You're saying like Oprah doesn't do anything and blah blah blah. But have you seen anything Oprah done for but Chicago? But that's what I'm trying to tell you. Drake does stuff for the city that he doesn't broadcast and what, that people for don't know about. Yes, that people don't know. The remix about. project you talking about? No, there's other stuff that I heard about through Solitaire. That okay. he does that not other people know about. Mm. Um, and so it's like these celebrities, they are not necessarily broadcasting. Like, I'm not out here Snapchatting every time I do give a homeless guy a dollar. Like, well, you're not, you know, there's well, people. There, I know I'm not anybody of status. I get that. I'm, but I, And it's kind of inconvenient, but, too. But, 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 but no, but because I say that because there's people who are on social media uh, posting videos of them helping out the homeless people and doing this and doing that. And it's like, yo, nobody, like like cares like why the moment you do that i saw this quote and it was like the moment you do that you're feeding your ego like you're not helping anybody yeah and so- yeah, yeah, yeah. what is <laughs> that what else? What else? i'm fucking here on earth i don't understand see things i don't understand i'm a person who lives by like selfishness like whatever yes I- but hold on, yo- hold on hold on but i live by selfishness i was like yeah my ego needs to be fed fuck that yeah but why do you need to well like why does if i was a celebrity and I was out here donating to, uh, I don't know, projects in the city, whatever, yeah. and helping out kids and stuff. I wouldn't wouldn't broadcast it to the world. Maybe if I there would. was a big accomplishment that the project did that, uh, I don't know, they raised this much money for another charity or something. Sure, I would broadcast that, but I wouldn't broadcast it as like, I, I helped these kids. I brought them like... I brought them a better life and blah, blah, blah. Like, I wouldn't do that. So that's why I'm saying you don't know that Oprah hasn't done anything for Chicago. It just might not have been broadcasted. Mm-hmm. That's the way I see it. See, I look at it like this, right? I think everything, when it comes to giving stuff, especially on camera, mm-hmm. it, it sets off a, 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 a domino effect. Whether, I don't, I, I'm, I'm way too old now to go look at this person and go like, oh, this guy's, you know, doing it on camera so he could look good. At the end of the day, that person, if I was really homeless, if I was really dead ass homeless, and someone came up to me and was like, you know what, I'm gonna give you a house, we're gonna get you a job, we're gonna fix up your kids, and they really did that shit and they did it all on film, and my life really did change after that, the fuck I care. The fuck I really care. And the fuck do you care because it was on camera? You should be more concerned. Are those people really getting help? Ask yourself that question. Are they really getting fucking help or is this all a shim sham? And if the, if the, if this, if the answer is those people really got help, the fuck do you care? The fuck you trying to go like, yo, you're just trying to get this. Maybe they are, motherfucker, but those people really got a house over their head. And those people really got beds to sleep and food in their fucking mouths. But that's the thing. You all see, that's exactly it. You have to see the credibility and the results of them. I seen I seen Kanye give that I man that has $100. I don't, I don't know. But maybe. you don't need $100, though. That's the thing. You that, But that's what I'm trying to say. For Oprah and for Obama, you don't need to see the risk. Like, you shouldn't have to question. I don't know. I just don't. I, I think it's. Prob- very probable that they have done stuff for Chicago. Maybe. Without us knowing. Maybe. Because a lot of celebrities be moving like that. Maybe. Because why Like why do they need to like... You do things out of the goodness of your heart. Mm-hmm. Not because you want to be seen on this higher regard. Yeah. Like for me, I'm helping people out of the goodness of my heart. I'm not telling everybody that oh, I did this for so and so and and that for... Like no, nah, that's not who I am. So I don't know. That's my take on it. All right, then I respect it. Um, Let's move forward. What are we talking about? Vince Mensa or? Do you want to talk about that? Okay, return. Yeah. All right, then we got it. What is it? All right, so Vic, Vic Mensa is uh, he doubled down on his comments. Apparently, in a freestyle, he mentioned an attack on rappers who are or ta- who domestically abuse women. Ab- abuse women. That was on the hip hop, uh, BT hip hop awards. I did not even know they happened. Well, it, they pre recorded. I know, but I didn't even know it aired. It hasn't aired yet. 
I swear it did air. No, they they. I swear they, it aired last this weekend. No, it airs on like the sixteenth or something. Are you sure? Yeah. I'm gonna Google it right now. We would see. We would honestly see the clip surf- surfacing around. I would post a clip on my fucking on my fucking Instagram. Okay. Fan. It hasn't happened. They were. Oh it, yeah, you're right. October sixteenth. Yeah. The the show Oops. has happened, but the the it hasn't aired yet. Okay. Because I guess they're trying to edit down stuff and saying things. So Vic Mensa in the freestyle, he says something about XXX Tentacion. Or I don't know if he said his name directly, or maybe he kind of signaled he singled them out in some type of way against violence against women, and then it looked bad. Mm-hmm. DJ Scheme went on the Twitter and was like, "Fuck Vince Mexa, fuck Vic Mensa." What I say? Vic Mensa. Right. I don't even know. <laughs> name five songs. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. I couldn't even name one. <laughs> <laughs> so Vic Mensa. So DJ Schemes tweeted, "Suck my dick, Vic Mensa." Yes. And then. Uh, he also said that XXX Tentacion's mom was in the audience and she witnessed that and and then Vic Mensa obviously came out and was like with his hand with his fist on top of a fist going like I made some comments on the BT like freestyle. Yeah, he looked like he was reading that shit off of. Yeah, like shit off of. I already I, I made some comments in the freestyle on my uh something 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 at the BT Hip Hop Awards. I apologize for the mother being in the audience. I did not know she was going to be there. And I... A grieving but, mother, and yeah. I'm sorry for her loss of her son at the hands of gun violence. Yes, but I vehemently... He said some words like, vehemently do not apologize for my words that I have said, and I want to stand up for women. We should stop glorifying beating women in hip-hop. Yeah, type shit. Blah, blah, blah. All that type shit. Which, the thing is, I'm not wrong. I'm not... I'm not, he's, I'm, not he's not wrong. I'm not wrong. And the thing is, yeah, like, I'm... I'm the older I get and the more more kind of like objective I kind of look at life, I look at it as like people shit on the dead every day. Shit on the dead? Yeah. Oh. People shit on the dead every day, B. Yeah. But people shit on the dead. So I I'm, don't So I'm I'm here like although I wouldn't do it. Although I really I really liked XXX while he was still alive. Mm-hmm. And I I was objective about it. It was like, all right, he hasn't found been found guilty. His girlfriend would lie about certain. Sh- well, I'm not saying his girlfriend would lie, but there's certain information that would be de- we don't detracted. Know if it's, yeah. And so I was waiting for the trial to see like if this man really did it, or if he was going to be found guilty on on the domestic violence things like that. But people shit on the dead every day, b. People, yo, I yo, if, if someone really hated me in like real life, I want you to shit on my shit. Come to my fucking grave, spit on my fucking dead carcass. Okay. And let me and let me know that you don't fuck with me even after my when I'm dead too. Because the thing is, people shit on Hitler. Yeah. People shit on Hitler. They're like, yo, he's not around. You don't got, you didn't have smoke for him back in 1925. You know, oh, 1935. You didn't have smoke for him back in 1930. Like, no one's going to say that. But I think the thing with this is, like, X was young. I think that's why people are very sad. Don't get me wrong. Yeah. I have no emotional attachment to people saying things about dead people. Yeah. Um, I mean, like, because I, I'm not... I'm not emotionally attached to X. I'm not emotionally attached to any other dead celebrity because I never knew them personally. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So for me, that's not a big deal. Um, it's more so the fact that, like, I think the reason people feel this way is because one, his mom was in the audience. Two, he was only 20 years old yeah. when he died. Um, so I think people were really hoping, you know, that if he was still alive, he was going to change his ways. I, I think, think he was on the verge of changing anyway. Yeah, and I think that's why people are very like, you know, you don't know what could have happened. He had his whole life to live. He could have changed his ways. Well, like, look at Chris Brown, for example. He changed uh, changed his ways. Chris so, Brown did a full 180, man. Yes. You mean 360 or 180? No, 360 brings you back to the same spot. Oh, 180, okay. you changed. <laughs> okay, okay, got it, got it. <laughs> um, no, but you see what I mean? So it's like um, people were... I guess people take it a little more to heart because he's young and whatever. Mm. I'm not taking it personally. I don't really care. Um, mm. I was a fan of X cool, but yeah. um, I mean, wh- where's his energy? Like, why isn't he bringing up the fact that Chris Brown did this? Or why isn't he bringing mm. up the fact like what about other select or like football players? There was that one guy. I remember seeing a video um, talking about Ray Rice. Well, I think it was Ray Rice when he uh, like knocked out his girl. He uppercut her in the elevator and she got knocked the fuck out yeah, in the like, elevator. Like, why isn't he talking about... Because those things were very viral at those point in time. I think he, he really focused on hip-hop celebrities. So he could talk about Chris. Rap. Well, Chris is a singer, right? Uh, he also raps. And he also... 
you're right. So he could, he could, he could sing, but you, you, but I don't think Chris Brown is held up. Oh, what you know you? what? You know what? You're right. You could, to be honest, I'm not, I'm not everybody forgets that Chris Brown did what he did. Like, that's a good really thing, though. It. But no, but that's it's a like, great thing. It's like for Chris, yeah, but it's like, yo, when you see those, like, I remember seeing those. I was only in the eighth grade when that happened, and I remember seeing those pictures, and I was like, holy fuck. I could stop never... saying, stop saying pictures. It was one picture. It was one picture that leaked. <laughs> okay, stop saying pictures. I could never and imagine. I, and to this day, I still kind of don't believe it. Like, could you imagine? No, like, you couldn't imagine as a woman, like, just feeling that helpless and hopeless and getting the crap beat out of you. Like, that picture picture like really it, it was like yo this is scary like people men really some men really think like this like that's scary oh that yeah that, i mean but to be honest let me just say i don't agree with just anyone putting their hands on anybody men yeah. or women like yeah yeah, right, yeah 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 because yeah, people forget that women do it all the time yeah. too so it happens i don't agree with any of that and also i'm i'm on i'm on the stand is like change is possible I'm able to forgive. I'm able to look past, right? Mm-hmm. Like if you done if you done if you done a crime and then you worked the rest of your life to try to fix reverse it, reverse that crime and do the best that you can to be a decent human being moving forward. Then what am I supposed to hold you to your past prejudice, your past behavior? Obviously, you change every day, B. Yeah. Like there's a person, person, personal identity that shit changes. Like, you're not going to be the same person when you're 20, when you're 45, you know? Yeah. So if you did something when you're 20, at 45, you're not going to be, especially when you took ownership of it in your 20s and tried to correct everything on moving forward in your 30s and 40s, right? Yeah. So I'm not going to hold you against it. When it comes to the other situations, yeah, Vic Mensa could really got at at Tupac, Biggie, Chris Brown, Mm -hmm. Gucci Man. Because Gucci Man Really? Gucci Man knocked off a few bitches, man. I didn't know that. You didn't see that? Nope. Oh damn. You could get a Gucci Man. Uh you could get a who else is there? You could get a whole bunch of rappers, man. Yeah. A That's bunch of rappers have over time they've had videos of them abusing shit. You could get a Kevin Gates. <laughs> he got hit with the like you could get a certain people. Like at that point it's like, all right, cool, whatever. And see, I get it because yeah, the whole next excuse is going to be, oh, well, X is relevant today because this was recent and blah, blah, blah. But it's like, yo, at the end of the day, like it, all that other shit that those artists did, too, is still going to be relevant because it's still like it still makes it questionable as to like, I don't know. It just makes me question them. Yeah. Also, Vic Mensa said that he had choked a woman, his, ex, <laughs> his, his ex-girlfriend. Oh my god! He said he had choked her, but the thing that still goes in my thing is like, yeah, he he took responsibility of it, and then yeah. obviously he's working forward to correct his actions and try to you change the narrative, right? Yeah, and just going back to the whole domestic violence thing with like women being able to do this to men yeah. too, like yo, watching Teen Mom, I you see it in so many episodes, like those girls, what, women attacking their men, <laughs> fucked, yeah, and yeah. even um Jersey Shore, Ronnie's um. His girlfriend, fiance, I don't know what you want to call her. Yeah. She dragged him in a moving car while their baby was in the car and she hit a divider. Mm-hmm. Um, and she like dragged his ass with the truck. Oh, for real? And he was like all mangled up like afterwards. I was like, holy, she got hit with domestic abuse charges and shit. See, the thing is, I'm not even trying to go that far. Like, I'm not even trying to get my ass beat. Like, no, like, no, nah, like, Fuck that's that. just crazy. Fuck that. Try to get my ass beat. All that shit. Fuck that. Yeah. But, um, um, now we go to the last topic. Oh, so okay, yeah. So yeah, because we went through all of them. Oh, what? Do you, yeah, I said for the Siri thing. What do you think? Oh, yeah, fuck that Siri thing. Yeah, it's not really. Right, fuck that. Really when that shit comes out, then it's gonna come out. Okay. All right, so let's get into the topic of the night, ladies and gentlemen. Dun, 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 dun. We need to have some sound effects for this shit. We need to have a fucking intro. Dun, 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 dun. <laughs> all right, so this information came right before we started recording yes it did and what has happened was so terrence j will yeah. you talk about it okay so yeah because i like read this and i was mind blown yes so good old terrence j from 106 in park yes and his model girlfriend jasmine sanders yes aka golden barbie on instagram yes um they last night or this morning at 12 30 a.m mm-hmm. they got into an accident um and with Terrence's McLaren. And Terrence is making money out here. Yeah. And uh, Jasmine was the one driving. Yes. 
and hit a set off a fire hydrant, hit a parking permit, a mm-hmm. tree, and broke the window of a business. The car is completely totaled, destroyed. Yes. Don't know how the fuck they survived it. And yes. oh, the reason we know they survived is because witnesses saw them both running away from the scene mm-hmm. and calling an Uber after the yeah. fact. Yes. Listen. A bitch was fucking drunk. I'll tell you that much because Shoot. who in their right mind is running away from the scene of that? The cops are going to run the place and find out who the car belongs to, yes. which they already did. Yes. And people saw you guys leaving. Uber now knows that you took a trip. The cops can very easily go and see that, that yes. you took the trip and stuff. Like, that shit is fucked up. They were drunk, drunk. Like, I, I just want to know. I want to know tomorrow. Like, I really want shit to come out tomorrow about this. I mm. want to know what their statement is. People are going crazy on Jasmine Sanders' Instagram comments. Like, oh, yeah. he just landed a new role in Orange is the New Black. Congrats. Like, that, that comment was funny. Yeah. People are like, oh, just turn yourself in. Like, yeah. you really fucked up. And like, yo, shit is crazy. So. <laughs> <laughs> yo, yo, I look at this. Yo, I look at Terrence. I look at Terrence and Jasmine sounding like the new body and Clyde. Them, yeah, like, they went off together. It's like fuck it, bitch. I'm rolling with you. Like yeah, that's yo. Because if I you. was Terrence, I would be fucking pissed. That's an expensive car. Yeah, McLaren. Yo, Terrence is making money, man. And that whole car is done for. Like, you think she was even on the insurance to even be driving it? Won't that be another issue? Sometimes you you, you let your you let your your bottom girl drive the car when you're not feeling well, and then yeah. his bottom girl wasn't feeling well, so nobody. And was it, to leave well. that McLaren out in a public area like that and go back home in an Uber. Yeah. Stupid. Stupid. <laughs> You sound like the TMZ guy. <laughs> oh, what's that Takashi song? Stupid. Oh, okay. Dum 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 dum. Stupid. <laughs> I just, I, I just really want to know what what their thing is gonna be. You were saying earlier, um, yeah. your theory. Tell them. My what? Oh, what? My about theory? what you think? Like the lawyer, they're gonna get lawyers. Oh yeah, yeah. So this is my prediction of what's going to happen. Right? They're obviously going to turn themselves in because they're already they're high profile people. You can't hide for long. You can't. And this do the, is on the shade yeah. room. This is everywhere. And yeah. even in her story, sorry, even in the story she posted last night before the accident, yeah. someone was like, "You look high as fuck in your story." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Delete that shit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so this is what I think is going to happen. Obviously, they're going to lower the fuck up. They're going to hire some good, good lawyers out in Hollywood, right? Yeah. And this is what they're going to do. They're, they're going to get themselves a great PR team as well. And then they're going to... Hold on, let me check the Instagram page. Let me see if they're already on it. Yeah, see. Let me see if, if they're not already on it or in it right let's now. Let's see. I'll do the Jeopardy sound effect. Dun, dun, All dun, right, see. Let's see what's going on. Dun, 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 Tip me over and pour oh, so they me haven't posted out. Is anything. that the 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 music, the song that it is? I'm a little. No, that's a different song. Same shit. Terrence, am I still going? Yes, no, no. Oh, Terrence, you don't want no stories. People ain't saying shit. Dun, 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 All right, so those guys haven't done anything. They haven't said nothing. Damn. They haven't said nothing. They haven't updated no type of stories. Damn. All right, so this is my prediction, right? Okay. They're going to lower the fuck up. They're going to get some great PR people. Okay. And then what's the, the statement's going to be? Uh, My Terrence over there was like, oh, both of us were, we were in a compromising situation where we got into an accident because, let's say, we were, we were distracted at the wheel. And when we got into an accident, we were just so distraught under the rest where we made a terrible decision and left the scene because we were just so, so under so much stress. And we're, and right now my girlfriend and I were dealing with some post-traumatic trauma. Yep. But this is a very traumatic moment for us. And, uh, I want you, this, this is what you know, it's going to be fake. No, don't look around. So why are you looking behind you? I know. Cause, cause no, I thought I heard no, the door no. open. So this is what they're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> moving forward <laughs> Listen, I, I will ask you guys respect our privacy <laughs> yeah that is what's gonna happen 100% you were so right that's what's gonna happen in this time <laughs> yep I could see it <laughs> I could see it oh. you're right you're right you're actually right yo, that, yo those those are the PR words it's 100%. Like, <laughs> we're going through a very traumatic time right now. I would, I would like if you please respect our privacy. Yo, but I just want to know, like, for, you guys, Google the picture. Like, Google Terrence J and Jasmine Sanders, and the picture is going to come up. And I just want to know how, like, they left that scene uninjured. Yeah. Like, how? 
Because that car is fucked up. Yeah, it's up. fucked up, yo. yo I, I would have thought somebody would have lost a leg or something. I would hate to have to be him. Yeah. I would hate it. Well, Terrence James, I, yo, man. You know what? If they don't break up after this, they're going to get married and they're going to have pl- a plentiful family. Yep. 100%. Yeah, because when you do something. That's real love. Yeah. If that was me and, like, my boyfriend was driving my car and yeah. he did that, oh, my God. First of all, I'm not leaving the scene. You could run your little ass home, yeah. but I'm going to fucking kill you. How fucked up could they be if they really go like, you know what? We got. Maybe leave. she was texting too at the same time. Who knows? Is it legal to text? No, I don't think it's no, legal. No, it's to not like... legal to text and drive anywhere. Well, some places are. Some places you could be on the phone and talk. Yeah, that's in like Mexico or something. Stop it, stop it. I'm talking it... about America. I'm talk- yeah. You know, in Mexico, drunk driving is not a big deal. It's not a concern. Like the cops will pull you over and then just say, okay, bye, go. Oh, for real? Yeah, that's what happens there. <laughs> They could drive well over there, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I'll call them. Like, in countries, in a lot of countries, um, like countries like that that aren't the U.S. and Canada, that's a, a thing. Well, minus England too. Minus Jamaica, because Jamaica they had like a bunch of signs say don't drink and drive. Yeah, no, in Mexico it's they don't care. Drinking and driving is a thing. Oh, right. Really? Yeah. Well, I wonder how fucked up they could be on on some type of drug. Yo, I would hate for my guy Terrence J and Jasmine Sanders to be like Bobby and Whitney. They Maybe could be, they were like on like Molly or something. Yo, that it doesn't make you that fucked up. I don't know. I never. I, I've, I've never tried Molly before. But I that's crazy have. though. That's crazy. Though. I I would hate for my guy Terrence to be on some like yo couple of drugs and shit. Yeah. The, the couples that do drugs together stay together type shit. Do they? Yeah, I would hate for Terrence to say like in a book in a memoir in like fifty years from now that I stuck my whole fist up Jasmine Sanders' asshole. Like ah. I would, <laughs> I would hate for Terrence to be on some type of shit like that. Well. That's some yeah. That's something you really want to think about, man. Shut up, Terrence J. Uh, Jasmine. I hope you guys, you know, are okay. Are you, yeah, or okay, are, are okay. Yeah. And you guys figure some way to get out of this. I mean, you have money, so I hope they're able to find some way out of it and um help themselves get out of it. Cause Terrence J. is a is a profitable young black man. Yes. And I would hate, and his girlfriend is very pretty. Yes. There's, when I start to make money, I want myself a very pretty girlfriend like that. Okay. Just remember, looks are and everything. You, I hope she has the personality to match. I mean, she understands the business. Yes. So I guess. No, but I'm saying when you get a pretty girlfriend, I hope she has a personality to match her pretty. You know, some of those pretty bitches, like, you know, those couples that you see, like, in the mansion, and it's, yeah. like, a really bad bitch and, like, a really hot guy, and it's, like, but the girl has no personality yeah. at all. Yeah. It's, like, she she doesn't even talk. She's an airhead. She just laughs and flips her hair every couple seconds. And I it's wonder like, how those know, type of chicks have friends. Like, all their friends are airheads, too? I probably. They probably don't talk. I wonder how dudes, like, just just, like... I I don't know. That to me has always been a wild concept. Yeah. Cuz I'm over here plentiful personality. And it's hard for you to find some men? Nah, it's not hard for me to find oh. a man. Hard for me to find the right man. Hey, man. Mind you the the guys that these bad bitches are with are definitely not the Well, right you're man. Playing, you're you're mostly playing defense. You're waiting for them to come to you, not really playing you're right, offense. Right, but that's cuz I'm a pussy. All right then. There I don't go. make the first move. Exactly. I'm actually a, a huge pussy. So you actually you're, I will admit it. Yeah, so you're on the defense. You're not even trying to be on, yeah, the, I'm offense. on the defense. Yeah, you're so. right. That's why we have this Valentine's Day contest. Yeah. Segway. <laughs> and then we're on to something new. All right, so <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, we, what, yeah. We no, start, we're we, wrapping up, right? Yeah, we're That's why up. I was went into the Valentine's. Yeah, we're Day wrapping thing. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, in case you guys forgot, I don't make the first move. So guess what? We doing a contest. That's a fact. Valentine's Day contest. That's a fact. Uh, just in case you forgot the unofficial rules, they will be confirmed at a later date. Uh, you must follow <laughs> at Educated and Reckless, <laughs> and you must send first and last name, occupation, age, where you're from, a goal you would like to attain, and why. And send your best but most realistic picture. And also, the last thing, what do you think I, Nina, deserve as a Valentine's Day gift? Do not say dick, because, I mean, that's not really a gift. That's like, you know those memes when it's like damn you got me pussy again like that's like that i'm talking a gift yeah man pussy's not something all that thoughtful accident. if you feel like you've uncovered my personality through listening to this podcast what do you think i would like ta-da the future <laughs> not chill we ain't jumping to conclusions that fast. oh man <laughs> <laughs> all right so uh if you enjoyed this uh entertaining and this conversational podcast you already know what to do people subscribe and rate the podcast let us let the people who may have not listened read the comment section of that uh rate the podcast app and let them know that you enjoyed this co- podcast thoroughly and share with a friend and share with a friend
And follow our Instagram page at Educated and Reckless. And do that as well. At Apollo, please. At No Better Nina. Do that as well. This has been. Hold on. We have anything else? We have anything outro to say? Uh, you have. Are you gonna be anywhere this week? Are you gonna, um, like do anything this week? Nah, I'm not doing anything this week. I'm chilling this week I'm too. Chilling. I'm actually moving. Where are you moving to? Oh, I forgot to tell you. Oh, you sold your house? No, I'm joking. Uh, <laughs> I'm moving into my basement. <laughs> oh, you're moving into your basement? <laughs> yeah, my grandparents is moving in uh, in a couple... It was supposed to be a month ago, yeah. in a couple weeks, because um, my grandma's sick, so yeah. we need to like be like taking care of her, basically. Yeah. Um. So I'm giving up my room to my grandpa, because it has a bathroom connected to it. But it's kind of... I kind of like being in the basement better, because... That means the whole entire basement is mine. Is the basement is the basement finished? Yes. No. Look so at you. I got a bathroom. I got a projector room. I got yeah. my workout space, yeah. and I got my bedroom. Yeah, look at you. You look, living lovely. Yeah. Living Next lovely. thing you know, my dad's gonna hit me with a so. When are you paying rent? <laughs> yeah, you got. You see, the thing is, when my mom asks me like dumb shit, I want to answer. I'm the kid of just not ever answering my mom when I'm just like, if I give you an answer, it's me not me saying nothing is the no that you Enough. want. You need yeah. to hear. My mom told me to pray today. Why? So, so I could get <laughs> a job. Oh. <laughs> I was like, you just got to pray. You don't pray No, enough. you should. Do you pray every day? I nah. pray every day. Nah. I pray every morning when I wake up first nah. thing. I don't even. I be struggling. No. I, I, be, I, 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 you know, I be struggling. I be struggling. I'm a child of God. What? He loves me very much. I, I am a student of Ayn Rand. So. Of what? Philosophy. Oh. It's philosophy. Okay. A student of Ayn Rand, which is objectivism. Okay. Objectivism, which is objectivism, is philo- when you deal with philosophy, you kind of like you deal with like the ego, right? Yes. You exit God out. Okay. I haven't ex- I haven't exited him out though. But yeah. I'm okay. just that's why I'm more objective about certain things. I'm more selfish about myself. Okay, you, you I got it. That? So that's why I say you know. Interesting. I'm selfish. Okay. Mostly things I do is for myself. No. Um, I know what selfish means. Yeah. Okay. But in the not in the in the the malicious way. In a most, yeah no 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 in, in a, a business way. move way yeah in a more in a in a in a make sense way it's yes. like I wake up every day I gotta make sure that I'm okay yeah and then the people that I feel self uh, I feel like I need to take care of because I feel self satisfaction out of it then I'll do that but yes. I'm not doing it because oh I gotta do it because I gotta think of others I'm not thinking of others I'm thinking of myself motherfucker yeah God damn like I'm thinking of my motherfucking self when I wake up and when I go to bed I'm thinking of myself so if, 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 if I'm never doing something for, for your benefit yeah. I'm doing it for my benefit because I feel like I would feel better after doing it not because it's uh, the altruistic way that, that's the I know I know okay yeah well that's why I can't love a girl and that's why I can't get married because the idea you know the people who say they're never going to get married are always the first ones to get married. Did I say I can't? <laughs> I said I, I'm not. I know, but the I people who never. say they're not going to are always the first ones to get married. My cousin was like that, and he is a straight lover boy right I'm now. I'm not. I'm not. I don't know. The whole marriage shit, the idea just seems kind of scary. Maybe scary. I should just start saying that I never want to get married because my uh, biggest fear in life is never getting married. Still weird. I want a family so bad. Man, not right now, but like. My, my fear is finding someone. And I'm like, God damn, how I get myself in this position? Yeah, no, no, that's another. Like, I am not. I, I listen. I am not getting divorced. We going through shit. We're gonna fucking deal yeah, with it. I'm not I, getting divorced. I'm, no I'm, way. Nah, man. So, so if I make enough money in life, I won't. I won't have to get married. I just have women at my back. But what about kids? Like, don't you want kids? I want eight kids. Whoa. I mean. Like, if I can financially support eight kids, I want eight kids. Oh, that's a lot. So, I'm going to have kids, <laughs> hopefully by, like... I want to have kids with a woman who is sensible. Yes, exactly. A sensible woman, who even though we may not be together or something. A sensible woman who understands that she knows what she's getting herself into, with no, get, being with me. And then when we pop out this demon seed of mine, it's... Demon seed. When we pop out the demon seed, and it's like, all right... We got this little thing going on, and we just keep it pushing. That's about yeah, it. but but you don't. I I don't want to share my kids. Like I want to be with the person that yeah. I'm having the kids with because you guys are gonna think this is so lame. But watching Teen Mom, you actually learn so much. Like these kids. All right, know you know what? You know what? Happening. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. You're gonna cut me off. I got. I gotta cut you off because we were going, we almost had two hours. <laughs> <laughs> we're not that two hours. Mark. All right, so oh, cute. yeah, <laughs> you, you wanted the Teen Mom, and I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> All right. Thank it you guys. For, valid point. Thank you guys for listening. Uh, this is another episode. Episode what? Twelve. 
Yeah. Episode 12. Episode 12 of the Educating the Reckless podcast. Appreciate you guys listening. Remember to comment, rate, and subscribe. Oh, yeah. Com- comment and uh, no, rate. And comment, su- rate, subscribe, share. Yeah. We're everywhere where podcasts are held. And, you know, keep pushing with us because we enjoy you guys listening to us and we enjoy talking to each other about everything that's going on. And more hilarious hot takes and all of that coming soon. I Bye. Peace.